what's going on guys welcome back welcome back to another one i'm back like i never left how's everybody doing man where have i been bishop off the team like man i've been gone a couple days and um i'm just now seeing this news so i'm gonna get my thoughts on that travis hunter has well i i knew he was on um the ea sports um college i'm excuse me ea sports college football 25 i knew he was on that but he confirmed it but um i don't i think everybody knew that but we're gonna get into that first then we're gonna talk about bishop for for those that's watching the rebroadcast please give me a like that'd be greatly appreciated also subscribe hit the bell notification so you can get an update on my latest content as it drops so travis hunter confirms he will be on ea sports college football 25 wait a minute is he going to be on the cover At, well, let, let, okay so let's see so university of college superstar wide receiver and cornerback travis hunter announced friday that he will be in the upcoming ea sports college football 25 video game yeah i, I kind of know that um he posted a college football 25 graphic on his instagram that included the caption I'm in the game. EA Sports' hugely popular college football video game franchise has been dormant for over a decade. And the last release was NCAA Football 14 in 2013. Man, it's been that long. It's been that long since. <clears throat> okay, so it's been that long. Um, lawsuits related to student athletes not being compensated for their likeness being used in the game what it was the death blow to the franchise but things changed in 2021 when the supreme court ruled that college athletes would be paid for their name image and likeness okay so the whole nil situation has changed that um i think the players are getting like 600 or something for colorado for being in the game um not sure how much travis is getting but I think the, um, I read an article said it was going to be like $600. Um, that sets the wheels in motion for the return of EA Sports' beloved video game series in College Football 25. is officially set to release before the start of the 2024 college football season. I will be getting that. And by the way, I play with Xbox. So um, if you want to play me, if you got an Xbox, then yeah, hit me up. Okay, it says it right here. EA Sports also divulged that every player who opts into being a part of the game will be compensated with $600 and a free copy of the College Football 25. Yeah, I thought it was $600. Additionally, some players will be given the opportunity to be brand ambassadors for the game. And it appears as though that may be the case for Travis Hunter since his Instagram post included a note that it was um, paid partnership. Okay, okay, Travis, with EA Sports and College Football 25. I thought it was a little bit more than him being in the game because we knew he was going to be in the game because a previous article before this one, this came out front today, but a previous article said that the Colorado players will be getting $600 for their uh, participation and um, for being in the game, for their likeness being in the game. But... Travis, uh, he his announcement seemed like it was something extra. So he's going to be a brand ambassador. So that's what it is. Because we knew he was going to be in the game. Um, while Hunter was limited to nine games due to injury in his campaign with the Buffaloes, he will be highly productive, finishing with 50, excuse, excuse me, he was still highly productive, finishing with 57 receptions for 721 yards and five touchdowns, while also recording 30 30 tackles, three interceptions, and five pass defended on defense. So, shout out to him, Travis Hunter. Now, let's get to Bishop. Now, how, how come I, I'm just finding this out? It's been a minute. I've been, I've been, I've been away for a couple days, and y'all telling me Bishop gone, man. Um, where is it for Bishop? Yeah. So it says 
Deion Sanders dismiss his former FSU football defensive lineman, Bishop Thomas. So uh, Bishop Thomas, a former three-star recruit in FSU's 2022 recruiting class, has been dismissed from Colorado Buffaloes uh, per Buffs beat. Thomas transferred to play for Colorado and Deion Sanders in May of 2023, according to um, this report here. He played 123 total snaps in nine games. Excuse me. He, he played 123 total snaps in nine games for the Buffaloes, 117 of them on defense before he was suspended for a violation of team rules at the end of the season. They don't say what he did, though. Thomas finished 2023 uh, with a grade of 56.1 and was ranked number 31 out of 39 players who saw the field for Colorado last season. He also finished with a run defensive grade of 54.9, a pass rush grade for 56.5, and an average grade of 60. The transfer portal window is currently closed to non-graduate transfers. However, Thomas can enter the portal once the spring window opens between April 15th and April 30th. Uh, Thomas appeared in two games at Florida State versus Boston College in Louisiana, recording one assisted tackle in nine games at Colorado. Six foot two, 305 pound freshman collected seven tackles, two tackles for a loss, one pass deflection, one fumble recovery, he will have three three years of eligibility remaining. Um, they said Deion Sanders in Colorado Buffaloes lost 13 players to the transfer portal. This all seen okay. I don't know what happened with Bishop, though, man. Like, what happened with the Bishop? What's up, Mertz? Villain Worthy, what's going on with you guys? What What happened with the Bishop, man? Like, what is going on? Um, what is going on with the bishop? It's kind of it's interesting, though. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know what he what what rules he violated. Um, you said um, we found out what happened to Dalton. No, I didn't find out. Yeah, Danielle Hill. What team rules? That's what I wonder. You said behavioral issues. Um, I mean, we we just speculating. We really don't know. We really don't know. Um, I want to say this: like the environment, everybody can't handle the environment. That's what it is. I'm not saying that he could or couldn't, but. That environment will either make or break you. Why do I say that? Because there's so much competition there. If you don't know how to handle it, you don't know how to adapt, and you're the type that you need a push, I don't know about this environment because you're not going to play. they got a lot of capable players in there on that defensive line that will fit right in. Yeah, he's gone, T. Nicole. I, I it, it's been a, it was announced it was announced um either yesterday or the day before but I had just now getting to it oh okay. and following that case got me tired I've been following this case and all that stuff and I and I just happened to look but the news had already broke about Bishop Thomas but I'm just getting I'm getting to it. I'm like the last one to get to it um but we don't know what he did. Um, some people say his behavioral issues, whatever. But they're not saying exactly what he did. You say you think Bishop whipped somebody in the locker room. Something happened. Something happened. And it's just like that, man. You're gone. That's it. Like I said, this environment will either make or break you. This environment is not for the weak hearted. It's not, you know why I'm saying this? 
it's a pressure on those coaches to win. They're not going to tolerate just anything. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of pressure to win because if they know if they win, the stakes are high. There's a lot of possibilities, man. They're trying to get into not just the playoffs. They're trying to get to a bowl game this year. Um, They're trying to do some things this year. Getting to a bowl game this year is – um. What's up, Big Worm? What's up, Thomas? Big get getting to a bowl game is the deal this year. You know what I mean? So they got to be with it. You got to be like a player that's not. You don't need a push. You're like self motivated, like a Chidozi. You know that now Chidozi will fit right in here. He'll fit right in and get playing time and do very well. But. Uh, see, the, see, the problem is a lot of players transferred there, right? Even last year. They're they're thinking that, yeah, I'm getting ready to have a I'm I'm changing scenery. I'm getting ready to have a really big season. I'm gonna start. I'm thinking NFL. Because I watched some of their interviews before they came there last year. But it didn't turn out that way. Um this this type of environment will expose you. E- either you got it or you don't. It's, there's no in between here. It's either you got it or you don't. And you can't really worry about team politics because if you're if you're really, really good, you ain't got to worry about it. Like the politics come to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's up, y'all? Let me get this invite thing going. It's been a minute since I was on. Let's get this invite. I've been following that trial over there, man. It's taking up a lot of my time. That trial is crazy. Guys, let me tell you. Whew, I don't like to mix subjects, but it's everything that I thought it was going to be. Everything. Everything. You said he's off the team. Close family, friends spilled the tea today. It's really bad. Coach Prime, I'm sure, has heard by now. No, um... Yeah, Coach Prime know that. He know he's off the team, but you said it's really bad? I'm sure has heard. I haven't heard anything, though. Let's see what. T. Nicole, you know what? What's wrong? You heard what happened? No, to I came to ask you what happened. Um, I mean, this news had already been out already, at least a day or so. Um, but I'm just getting around to it. Hey, Tom. I have no idea. What up, what up Max? What up? I what guess because I ain't been really focusing on Colorado like you. We've been in the uh, the other world. We've been in that other world. Ain't that other world crazy? world. <laughs> Thomas, you missing out, man. Um, I've, I've been like kind of busy. Yeah, I kind of been watching you. the Willows. Yeah, Thomas Bishop Thomas off the team. Yes, I'm, I'm, up, I'm up to like what's going on with the team. So, Thomas, tell us what happened. Well, about, about what was going on with these ones? About Bishop. Oh, what's wow. I told y'all, don't, I, didn't I say, don't get a, in a few minutes around in the spring, don't, you know I'm saying, don't be too attached to some of these players because. Yeah, you said that. It's going to be a cutlass, you know, so it's 1972 cutlass pull up and I ain't talking about a, you know what I'm saying, a Ford or whatever. They about to speak with people. Uh, Peyton, uh, I'm about to call this man Peyton Manning. Uh, See, my prom- thing is, I saw that he was on the spring roster. Now, Prime not playing. He probably was on there for a little bit, but then, you know, they had to make it official and cut him. Be like, crazy. Nah, I, man, I said in, uh, I was saying this in TLP chat this morning. I was on this morning, and I was like, man, Prime is not playing. This man then, for one, he was with the culprits. You know what I'm saying? Willie Gang, Smoke. You know, they was doing their little internet chat. Then he put out some stuff. Come on, you're not about to sit out here. Come on, as a player, you're not about to wait, be wait, wait. Like that. TLP you know, the platform is reporting this. That was just well, he had said this morning about you know something about I'm, I'm not sure how true it is. It's a list. Man, I don't trust Harry. <laughs> no, the uh, major um, websites are reporting it. No, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying him. He said that he was cut. He said something about um, 
that it was because of him missing the flight or something that he was in trouble. But I mean, I do remember <laughs> him coming back late. They like he missed practice. But but if you on a football team, you're not supposed to miss practice. You miss you miss one day in practice. I mean, even if you like not in a hot seat, that could instantly put you in a hot seat. Like if you miss in practice and you out here causing drama, <clears throat> yeah, you about to get cut, bro. And like Palm looking for anything, he looking for any reason, cause. They team overall right there. They really like I think like an eighty eight team overall. They get they they drop a few players, and um they'll be at like a 90, 90 overall. So mm-hmm. prom prom trying to touch it up. You give him any little look, he gonna get rid of you. It's football, man. It's time to win. I mean, no feelings allowed. You know what I'm saying? Because you know it, them things change. And, uh, football ain't nothing about feelings. It's I mean, about- we all saw. They're like they're saying like he disrespected Coach Mo. I mean, we all saw the clip. If you, I mean, if you watch the Amazon Prime show, um, where he said what he said to um, Coach Mo, and then when he was like that, he missed his appointment because he had to clean his apartment. Like we all saw that, and we knew like he was away from the team and suspended at the end of the episode. But yeah, that is out of there. He said he disrespected a coach or something. Allegedly. I mean, he told Coach Mo, uh, what you think you my effing daddy or something like that in the video? Yeah, that's not a reason to get kicked off the team, though. For that right, kind of- that's it can, what I'm it saying. Be, well, you got to look at it like this. Like, all the rest of the team, he got to be able to control and discipline the whole team. And him, he, like, really, he put Prime in a bad spot because now Prime like this, if I let it go, it showed that I want, I'm not willing to discipline my players. I let them talk crazy to my staff, do whatever they want to do. See, that little stuff, starting off, you can't allow. Like, if you was known for being disciplined and you had all that structure set, and then it started to, like, riff rap like that, maybe he wouldn't be so because it would be more, like, cultural, tradition set in. But, like, right now, when you just now getting in there and you got people and you trying to lay it down like that, now nah, you can't afford nothing, bro. You Like, everybody got to be on T. Or you out of here, and so huh. I see it happen. I already knew he was out of there. Like he out of there because you already for one, you already missed the whole spring practice. Right, that po- that's the biggest politic of the team. This is like you still looking like this is how you start. Like I don't care what nobody talk about. This is how you start on the football team during spring, spring drills, all stuff coming up to the summer. You get you start moving up on the depth chart, and you miss all of that. You might as well say you might. If that was me, I'm already know I'm not off. Team. I'm already know. Everybody know he off the team when he didn't show up to practice. Yeah, I know he didn't show up this spring. Right, that said it all. Like either he not playing this year for show or he off the team. Either way it go, he not playing this year because you don't just come back like that. Especially if, if it was that serious, he would never been off. The, you know what I'm saying? He would still been there practicing. But nah, uh, him Dawson, I, we all knew Dawson was gonna get cut. We was like, why he? <laughs> <laughs> You take the coach back. You been tell me we didn't sit here and thought Dawson was gonna play again. I thought he was good. I, I mean, I, I I didn't speak on it much, but I already, I mean, I knew he was out of there, bro. It's like we we win the games talking. He oh when a uh, uh, boy shot that. Oh, that's when, what uh, you're talking about. Yeah, I remember that. Remember yeah, who was saying that? Like, oh, yeah, okay. I remember. Mm-hmm. When he trying to leave? Is when he about to leave next? Yeah, you don't know what he did. Uh, Dawson Willie. <laughs> that might have been his boy, though. That might have been because I know he had made a comment when Willie um, left. That's his boy. Yeah, they was roommates. Yeah, so. Well, you know, I, I was just, how you feel about this, right? How you guys feel about this? This team will make or break you. Like, if you're not, if you're the type of person where you need a push, nah, man, you have to be self-motivated to work for this team. Yeah, that's not the team for that. Yeah, you got to be a professional already. You got to be and a good even getter. Then, and even then, like with the self motivate or like having needing to be motivated, mm-hmm. we saw Prime try to do that last season. And it was almost to the point where he was like begging them to like have faith in themselves, have believe in themselves. And it just didn't work. Like it was, it was almost pathetic. And it's like no one at that level, no, and with that opportunity, no one should have to beg you to want to go out there. Right. Last year was a lot. See, like, again, I'm going to go back to my, like, my whole thing. When you got seven weeks and you 
seven weeks of practice, you about to start your season, and then mid-season stuff not working, and the coach telling you to come on, let's go. But you could try your most, but you got to look. You start looking back, and you see you wasn't getting prepared for the season. See, like these guys right here, they when he said, come on, believe in yourself, they had to go back to here and think, this is why – I'm ready because we was doing this together in February, March, April, May. Mm -hmm. We put all the work in. And they could believe in themselves. Last year, even though Charlotte was good, he really couldn't put his everything out. He wasn't sharp because he didn't get there until after May. He missed all of this. Could you imagine Charlotte not showing up till May right now with the with this team? So we got to look at all of that too. I get it. Prime, he was coaching them as best as he could, but they just couldn't. You just couldn't. You can't prepare for a whole season in, two, in eight weeks. You just can't. I'm to be yeah, honest, they weren't really that good. They were backups to back up some of them. Yeah, so. yeah you can't Most really. Most of them, all of them. And then on top of that, they backups, HBCU players, a group of fives, walk-ons, second strings, like third strings that was already there. Like, And then they got like – Half the team not even there till the end of May. So the guys you working out with, you can't really work out with. Like half the come on, this is that hard. So that year was set up, and people they don't, they don't want to. I like how the coaches are kind of trying to put that out too because they know the team they played with last year. They it wasn't the team they was doing this with last year, and it's like yeah. it's tough, man. Just imagine this whole right. imagine half of this team not here in, in May, and then another half just comes in in June. And, mm -hmm. and like you guys go out with those people, so they and you see what they doing together here. So you miss all of that, you throw your season out the out the window. Yeah, right. it's like pretty much a, a wrap. Hey, the man above, thank you um, for the donation. I preach. You said he's. I, I mean, I think I appreciate. It. He said, "Salute, brother Max, tapping in from Texas." Okay, yeah. tapping in from Texas. All right, all right. Big T in the building. There's a lot of people still that, well, not a lot, but it looks like a good majority of them are already there. Yeah. But there's still some people that need to get there. Yeah. Um, the two freshmen and 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 two and two or three other people. Remember, yeah. uh, um, what's his name, son? And it mm -hmm. might be two others. The That's Florida. I know the <laughs> Shepherd kid. Yeah. Um, baby T.O. He's not there yet? Mm -mm. He must be finishing class. I believe so. Right. And that's going to help everything transition well because now look, they don't got to, because they already said in spring politics. So whoever going to be looked at as starter, this and that, is going to be solidified. Everybody going to accept it in the summer. Last year, didn't nobody accept nothing was said in the summer because everybody had a, had, a, had a strong idea of starting. And then when that didn't happen, it turns into jealousy quickly after. So that's when the season started. It's, if they would have went through this, like now these people are gonna come in here in the summer, they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to go against whatever they got right. set as a team. Whatever they mm -hmm. got set, the rest of them gotta follow and jump in line. And so just catch them out. Right. It's just they just they just making it more uh cohesive as a as a traditional <laughs> team. People wanna keep saying they're not they're not developing or whatever. They they got what they they got their classmen set and they got their people that they need in there to develop. So this is time gonna tell now. Yeah, this, we they know we know football here. A lot of people know football. Come up, yep. I'll be learning a lot myself. <laughs> it's time. Like right now, they um uh, they mm. like, it was in the books. They got the memory. I they got the, I know they got their playbooks. I seen the film like yesterday. He was running one on ones when they was talking about oh boys pissing. We said oh, he pissed somebody in the dirt. <laughs> he put him in the dirt. Plant. Baby talking spicy. Yeah. Hey, yo, talking about hey. So it's happening now. Like they yeah. about to get all that. They're gonna. I think next week, right before summer, right before, right before spring, they're gonna get like a little bit more one on ones. And then when they mm -hmm. come back, they're gonna be in the helmets. Mm -hmm. and they're gonna be getting in the pads. Like and I do like the fact that they seem like they all get along with each other and they yeah. act like being around each other because like, you can see the drastic difference compared to last year. Yeah, it's, you can. Yeah. It's like they get along with each it's other, but they know it's that. competition too, but yeah, they picking each other up as well. Right, because good players congratulate, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about 
iron sharp iron. I heard a couple fights breaking out. I like mute to my ears. More politics saying. I was here to see a little groups getting it. You see, yesterday was it yesterday. He was like, man, uh, Bessie, you about to get pushed off the block. You about to get pushed off the block. I love it. I love it. I love that like, thought. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's you know, only going to motivate the um, the younger players to, to get on that level. Right. Facts, yeah. Because they're going to want some, too. They're going right. to want a little bit of the action. Right. Whether they third right. on the depth chart. Like, look, I'm third on the depth chart, but I'm ready to get, get with y'all. And they're going to get better. That's how you develop. That's what Coach Prime said. He said that – um. We bring in the old guys, and then he said the guys that's almost there, they're going to develop by next year because they're playing with these guys. So he got that whole system down. Right. Then so. the guys go, they're going to develop the younger guys that come in. And then hopefully they might get a couple more seniors to come in. I think we're going to have a bunch of juniors next year. We're not going to have that many seniors mm-hmm. next year. So we might get a couple more seniors again. But I think, I think Mayor's got two years. I think Johnson got two years. So a lot of those guys we even got gonna come back and be big, you know, impacts on the team. But now I think just I think um Mayors is gone after this. He might be uh, he is he gone? I think I think I one or two of them two years. I might be wrong. He wanna be gone after this. No, I think he's a um Oh that's it for his him? masters. Like that's okay. it. He go up with oh, masters or you out there. Or you out here. Yeah, okay. They gonna be subtle as a team though, but right now I'm like I'm lo- I'm loving the politics that's taking place. You know I mean? I'm like, yeah. Cause after that fight, everything smooth out, man. And then everybody like, okay, cause you gotta fight the people. Like once you get into a fight with somebody, like can't nobody else get into a fight with you. you. Y'all gonna jump somebody, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get a mess with. It's like y'all brothers now for real. Brothers fight, man. Yeah, they they don't fight. And wait, they had another fight. Supposed to be something jumped off. You know, it's gonna be a couple two. Three, oh three, yeah, three. yeah. It's that's that's normal. Like then they go out to dinner or something afterwards. Right. You know and then I get look. I get you back to. I get you back next practice. Right. Right. You, right. Know? you better be that's ready all. for the next practice. Yeah. The, all that started to go off. So yeah, man. I love it, man. They and man. Yeah, I love the attitude on this team. I still want to know what Buddy right here did. You know what? I just that's a random video I'm playing. Yeah, I don't know. Like. <laughs> He just know he in trouble. But they, whatever they, it was, like they that. got him. Whatever it was, he should be all right. Yeah, he could. He but they had him circled. <laughs> they and you see, uh, Prime had got Shiloh together too. Cause Shiloh be playing. He be staying on him all the time. That's his twist. Yeah, but Shiloh, you. man, he just like Travis when he run, he don't get tired. Uh huh. He started start stepping at every five. I don't know. If, I don't know if he was listening, but it seemed like he started. That's how you step one every five. You see how he was running? He was stepping right on the line. Then his next foot was right in the middle of the five yard line. And then his next step was right at the line. Then his next step was right at the middle of the five yard line. Then your next step yeah. was right on the line. That's hey, how give you me one second, Rod. Football. You there? Yeah. What's going on? Oh, okay. What's going on, Rod? Okay. What's up, Rod? What's up? What's up? What's yeah. going on? But that's how you that's how you get your steps down to run like low full fours, full threes. You gotta step like that. You gotta step one every five. And you you get that down, you're gonna be running full four, four, three easy. You start running faster like that, you get into four twos. But you gotta take those steps. Some hey Thomas. Step hey Thomas, twice you, and you, go. Thomas you, still think, you still think they're gonna score 70 points or better? Oh God! I think they might get a one game. Maybe it's gonna be a game they score 62, 64 off the show. Yeah. Just off of how I'm looking at, like I said, if you look at what they already did last year, look, they put up twenty eight points on by passing only. Remember, they didn't run the ball last year. Hardly. They hardly had a scoring touchdown in the game. Like it was already so. Okay, they averaged twenty eight. They say they, I don't, I don't say they're going to pass any less. I say they're going to run more because they're going to have the ball more next year. They're not going to hold the ball for 18, 20 minutes a game. Hopefully they get like 25, 26 possession, you know, a game, you know, average. So if you look at it that way, right, they score 28. The city is a couple more run plays. They start scoring on run plays. Okay, that's 35. Okay, they start scoring on run plays. Now let's say they score one more touchdown on offense because they got way more better receivers and and the passing line, all oh, that's prepared better. Okay, so they score one more time. That's 42. Then let's say 
one game they do this, they average about 40, 42 points a game. Let's say one game, they get a kick return to the house. Then one game, the same game, they get an interception to the house. Because they're going to get a fumble to the house or something to one of these games, a pick to the house, a fumble, because they, they call us fumbles. Then let's say they get another <laughs> extra test on the offense. So when they play on all cylinders, when mm. they had that game, when they at all cylinders and they going, yeah. I see them scoring like that easy. Because look what they're doing seven right year now. game is crazy, though. No, 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 no. That's 70 <laughs> a game. No, I said, I said, I said, I see him averaging like 40 a game, 40 points a game, 45. I said, I, said I give him 45 because I was saying they average like around 30, 35. I give him 10. But I look back again, you know, they average 28. But again, if you just give him one more passing touchdown, which I honestly could believe they will be able to do, and let's say they start averaging a rushing touchdown a game. That's that's putting them. If you look at them, it's two. This those two touchdowns. That's putting them at, you know, forty two point average, forty seven point average. If you just keep doing what you did and, and add on what you got now, I mean, I'm just being off the numbers, and that's what. And that's how the guy on, from on three rated them ten because when you look at the Big Twelve, all of those teams, like I said, all of those teams that don't score like CU, they all score like 26, 24, 20. They are all under CU. Like the team that they got above CU, they only score like three points more average, like 31, 34. I think Texas Tech is like 28, the same as CU. Then like Kansas is 31, but then Kansas State was 37, but you can't really count that because Will Howard gone. And uh, uh, Texas was scoring 41 points. They're out of here. Oklahoma was scoring 38 points. They're out of here. So you only got Kansas State, really. And then you got Utah, with they average like 31. And then uh, Arizona averaged like 31 from the Pac-12. So, of course, they're going to be – and that's how he did it. I, I'm looking at it the same way he's looking at it. I'm like, okay, because that's how they're looking at it. Because how else can you look at it? You're going to see what these teams have done. So what they have done was that. And so I'm, I'm looking at what they're going to improve. So, yeah, they're going to be scoring like that. They're going – it's going to – because this last year, remember, they was averaging 40 for the first three, four games. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't say that they can't score like that. And just watching Shador growing up, he was scoring like that in high school. He was scoring 70, 72 points in high school. Like, dang, how is he doing this at quarterback? Throwing five, six touchdowns in the halftime. He was been doing that. So – yeah, I can see him doing that. Just, every just score time. more. Just score more points than the other person. That's all I care about. Yeah. <laughs> we need to win. Yeah, I see that. Just I'm, just, more. I'm just looking at what they – I'm just looking at – like, just remember, that last year team, even though they was ranked in, in worse than, like, whatever, passing, but they was ranked 60 in – I'm not passing, but they was ranked 60th in passing. Yeah, and, and run blocking. When run passing, they were uh, – quarterback passing, they was ranked last. Well, sacks, they was ranked last in sacks. But they was ranked like 60 in passing. But they was ranked low in running because they didn't run the ball. So it's like defense. People say they was bad and they was ranked last in defense. They was ranked last in uh, points allowed because they gave like 35 points. But if you look at red zone defense, no, they was like top 15. If you look at turnovers per game, no, they was like top 10. If you look at interceptions per game, no, they was like top 10. So if you just fix – a little point here and there. Let's stop them from scoring a little bit. That'll help the defense out. How we do that? Stop the run game a little bit. Stop the rush. Stop the score. Defense pick up. I see them doing a lot next year. And I see the offense having a, I mean, a special teams having a, a real special team next year. So they start scoring they gonna be on the defense. Yeah, they're going to be special because they're going to be worked on from now. And they're going to have their rotations down from now because – you going to know what teams you are in June, not in August. But, like I said, it's going to be where I Like I said, if they just play like a team, they're going to be dangerous. They was playing one-legged last year. Get mm-hmm. that. It was really – because, like, man, ask any coach. Hey, coach, how many games do you think you can win with three months of practice for the team? And he's going to look at you like you nuts. Without spring and, and seven on seven first, you about to get blowed out, man. <laughs> so – so, so who y'all think was that uh, defensive lineman that got pancaked? I'm trying to speculate. Mm. Hmm. You said the defensive know. lineman. What was that question again? I said, who, so who do y'all think the defensive lineman was that got pancaked in the, that new well-off video? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I want to know who did who who was the one that pancaked them. <laughs> they just saying. 
Uh, Shay gonna be alright, man. Well, they moving my side. It's gonna be something else. Shay try. He trying to be a uh, a vocal leader, but everybody on his ass like that ain't you. Shane is, is not he's like that. that he, he's saying he's that guy, T Nicole. He that guy. He that definitely he's talking. saying, and he trying to show it. So I ain't mad, but so he might he might show it like that. I, I heard Chidozi got got a good little. Got a good little block too. I heard he done put somebody else on. I don't know. One one more thing about Bishop. Max, I'm come I'm I'm not believing he's off the team. You're not believing he's off the team? Nope. Because he's still registered he's still a student at CU. And the way Amazon Prime ended, this is all a part of the script. The script. <laughs> this is a part of the script. But ESPN is reporting it. Yeah, but he's still a student. Yeah, well, he can still be a student. Nah, Max, this is a part of the script. <laughs> this is chapter one of season three. I'm telling you. And then he's going to come back and. God, the, the year of his life. And then Coach Prime is going to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Do you want to do this, Bishop? Do you, you want this? Want this, Bishop? Yeah, they make a movie over like, there. It's a part of the script. You, you, you might have a point. Look, he said, can you do this, Bishop? This your last chance. Mm-hmm. And then he come out and had a breakout season. The whole last <laughs> the whole last Amazon Prime, the, the spotlight on Bishop was that he's lazy as fuck. He, he doesn't <laughs> do his work. He, he misses his practices. He don't show up. And we giving him all these chances, and then the last cliffhanger is him going into that office, and then them saying he's suspended from the team. Look, this should do a br- little brother right here. Who's that? I can't the see. twins. The the the. Oh, is his his big his extra tall twin? Yeah. Prime think he's slick. Don't went and got your door doppelganger. Yeah, like dang, Prime. They wear the yeah. same number and everything. Yeah, prime like okay, I'm going with him. They saying that uh, the the high school quarterback that's committed to Notre Dame is uh, Shador Twin. I ain't seeing. I forget his name already. Yeah, the quarterback. That the boy is tall school. as hell. Yeah, he he is so tall. I think high he might be the number too. two. But you see, your theory with his he get his spot right. Yep. You know who I haven't heard of. I haven't heard um, anything from um, who, who's the Savion Washington. I ain't heard nothing from him in a minute. He's quiet. He's there. Yeah, he did. I see him in the videos. He just don't say nothing. He just be in the background. Right. The moving wall. He's like a moving <laughs> wall, y'all. Don't worry about Savion. <laughs> now he said here. Bishop is lean on me 2.0. You like crack, don't you? Let the clock go ahead. Jump, jump Sims. Smalls. Jump Smalls. Small crack, don't you? Oh my god! I, I think it's just to get it together. I think Savion Washington gonna start at left tackle. I think so. That's you saying. Uh, you saying Steve not starting? He a freshman though. I don't see him starting. I think he'll uh, play. Oh, they got I don't play. think he'll play. What's in the bag seat is starting. <laughs> What's in the bag seat could be on the bench. Hey, if he... <laughs> <laughs> he is, <laughs> I don't see him. He is. Freshman, like I don't see him starting. I think, I think he'll play, but I just I don't think they're gonna send him out there to be like, hey, start. I think you know, they might I, put him inside. I, was, I say that I say that starting up. I said I didn't really, I don't I don't see him starting starting at tackle, but I do see him starting probably at guard or something like that, just to like ease yeah, into tackle. But see, yeah, I said I said that's starting off. Yeah, because you know, because at I guard, think he's a, I think he's a tackle. Linebackers. Yeah, he's, he's a tackle, bro. Mm-hmm. He he could barely put up no shade on John Seaton. I like the guy, but he was like struggling to do 225 on the bench. He's not doing no damn no guard. Could you imagine yeah, Jordan Seaton trying, nah, nah, nah. trying to block? Could you imagine Jordan Seaton trying to block um Anquin Barnes? Have you seen Anquin Barnes fan? Yeah, he's all he, he, he he pro ready. He is nasty. He and that 225, he was repping. He you know he was already burnt, so I wouldn't say that's how strong he is, but like at guard, he wouldn't be really like, even if he do got a 
I don't think they would put him in one on ones with the with, with the two. I think he has had him set up to go pick up linebackers at, at guard. Like I said, it'd be easy for him to kind of start at guard because that's where you want to like start a lot of your pressure alignment at guard. It's hard to tackle because you got to really be strong and fast. And those guys at end be like pro ready. So that's the whole thing. We was I was talking about this earlier. I feel I don't see if, if he ain't starting tackle, I see him playing guard, bro. They're gonna have him on the field. They're going that's to that's how our Orlando pace right there. He's starting right away. Yeah, he's on the field. I don't see like I see him move too. I don't think he's not going to be off. The, I don't think I don't think he's not going to make the field. Like I, I see him on the field. Like you, you see, see him, him on the move. field. Yeah, them drills you were showing when they was running cones. You see his feet. I got feet, boy. What a he like six five three thirty, boy. I got feet. I <laughs> mean a lot. You know what I'm saying? Him and Tyler Johnson got feet, feet. They got real feet work. Like I lie, so they got real feet for Lonnie. I don't think somebody she... somebody said they're gonna start cast Cleveland. I said, man, hell, y'all y'all just saying stuff. People like, just be yeah, saying yeah, stuff. Yeah. In the future, they will. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, and of course. Yeah, that's the future of dude. Right now, hell no. That boy won't get rushed. He said he can say he put some money in the dirt too. He said he put some money in the coffin real quick too. A little cash. Got that technique though. He like, probably he could. He's scared. He ain't scared at all. No, he's not. I, he's not I, feel, like, hey. I feel like I can rest cash and beat him. Hey, cash my what? you turned upside down, feeding the ankles upside <laughs> down, equal right. ankles up. <laughs> you gonna be over there? Let's run the coffin. Legs to the straight up, <laughs> press <them. laughs> Hey, you never know, man. Hey, you just yeah, never know. Really stuff. He might put on thirty pounds for the season start. Hey, he gonna he gonna be a, a monster come time. His uh, second year. Yeah, second year gonna be MSC. Especially by his junior year, he'll be ready. Right, you see, uh, what's that, Laziz? The what's that other guy? Laziz? I keep Zelinkas. Yeah, Zelinkas. Oh yeah, he looks good too. Yeah, he looks like he's getting better. He's putting it in too. (laughs) When he when they threw him in with the 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 Lions last year, he didn't give up no sack really. Um, he did okay, you know, considering he was a freshman. They just threw him in there. He did pretty good. Right. That's so somebody you want to keep. Yeah, I like him. Right, so Lincoln's. You got a bunch of those guys in there that could kind of like you know just develop a little bit with some good practice. I guess it's gonna and be they, a lot. Go ahead, Mo. Yeah, I was just saying. Uh, if they got some good uh, quality D linemen to go up against too in practice, especially the yeah. edge. Yeah. Right. Uh, like they're gonna be very developed. And DBs and quarterbacks. I mean, look, their second string quarterback might be pretty good, man. You got Stav, and you got the, you got Walter. You know what I'm saying? So them DBs and them second string DBs gonna be pretty good too. So them first teams gonna get really good looks. I'm telling you, it's gonna be like the second string is gonna be better than most first team quarterbacks. They're gonna play. I can see that for sure. They're gonna get trained up. And just imagine when they when they go and play them quarterbacks, they can't throw the ball. And then they got slow running backs that's not fast as Dylan or all. <laughs> if I to get pulverized, Joe, I see him playing super fast, smacking next year. Like I was playing last year. People forgot they was playing fast for a minute until the refs kept flagging them out. But I think they're going to be playing like that more steady just to do the fact they practicing now, man. Because so you're going to see, you're going to see what the difference that, that having the offseason makes. Not having the off season, you know, all the missed tackles, them boys gonna be tackling like pros next year because that's what it I, was, man. I, I want to see DeMar Kennedy take off. I see like him taking off. He gonna get in there, play because it's gonna be plenty of playing time. There's gonna be plenty of receivers getting the ball. I got, I got three extra games. They make it to a conference champion, uh, championship and win, and all that. Well, ain't no if when they make it because I don't see like I, said, I don't see more than five teams that score. Enough to really keep them off the plate, man. You can just go show me five teams that's really going. Mm-mm. And you know, you know, Dylan doing track, so he gonna get fast. Yeah, that boy Edwards out there running track now. Yeah, Dylan gonna be so nuts, bro. They're gonna have a lot to deal with, man. I get it, like I get it. I, I just hope they really just get their line broken core right. And just really just do that what they're supposed to do. 
I don't see nothing else from, like, really being a problem. But I think Livingston, like, everybody was like, oh, he's the end call to play. But this guy, I don't mind him not calling the players because this man is known for being the mad scientist. They call him the mad <laughs> It's like this team got a bunch of people that got, uh like, crazy nicknames. We got Eric Bradley. He, they call him the Wolverine. Uh, Brady David Swain, they call him the Punisher. Then we got Shador, you know what I'm saying? You know, then we got a uh, coach. They call him the mad scientist. <laughs> but, bro, this is like, I'll tell you, it's the Avengers. Prime is putting the Avengers together, bro. He about to, he about to beat on some heads next year, bro. Yeah, man. I'm rooting for Coach Thomas. Coach going to go crazy, bro. I'm telling, I'm telling you. Like, you. He, he had he like. Gonna, he, he, yep. Go ahead, him bro. and, um. What's the name? Um, Rock. Yeah, Rock gonna break some. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Rock ain't. You probably will hear some of them on tomorrow film. Like Tyler Brown, man, did like four people dirty, bro. Why Tyler Brown? <laughs> I can't man. wait till that shit. Man. I can't wait till the videos come out. Oh, Tyler Brown, I get to put hands on y'all. Ooh. <laughs> Prepare, like, protect yourself at all times, yo. <laughs> like, for real. Hey, protect, protect yourself at all times. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm really excited? Go ahead, Max. Oh no, I was just uh, the man above. Dylan did say he got bigger and he feels he feels faster. Just want to answer that. Big deal. Hey, hey. So, what y'all think? What the coaching staff gonna do? Like, with all these pro guys coming in, how you think the coaching staff gonna really? Do I'm, these- I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they could be a little bit more versatile. You know what I mean? Like. The last, I mean, no, no disrespect on the last coach or nothing like that, but they felt, I feel like it was like a, it was like my style or no style type of thing. I'm hoping these, these new coaches coming in can kind of be more versed, like versed out with the uh, play call. If y'all you know what I mean. What? Yeah, I think they should be all right. Um, yeah, they got a lot of pro on that pro coaches on that team. A lot of pro experience on that team now. Let me see. It's and then and Warren Sapp, he's supposed to be coming in March. So <clears throat> Sal should be back. Yeah, they I think they're gonna be all right. As far as coaching and wise, they have a lot of experience. Right. You think that's gonna make a lot of uh high school players wanna flip to see you now? Especially um especially when they start winning. Yeah. Oh yeah, if they start winning, it's over. They see all the deals they're getting. Travis Hunter is um we all knew he was gonna be in the sports game, but he, he's also a brand ambassador for um EA Sports. Um oh, college really? football twenty five. Yeah, he's a brand ambassador. Oh, so they might as well make them all brand ambassadors then. Because I was thinking, like, why did they say he's in the game? We knew he was in the game because the article said that each player is getting six hundred dollars in a free game just for their likeness, right? But they said some. It, it sounded like a little extra with him, and then they said he is a. Um, well, this post is sponsored by EA Sports, so he's like a brand ambassador. So he's getting a little bit. He's getting a little bit more money. They should all be ambassadors, at least. At least I think so because they're very popular. So like every player should be like I mean. It's pretty much that's what they're like. That's what they are. I mean, they could be crowns too. They could be international ambassadors, global ambassadors, crown. But if they just gonna make them a brand, that's that's like the first ambassador. Like that's perfect if anything. Because if you look at it, I'm looking at it because I'm looking at it today. I'm like, wait, hold on. Let's say they're really talking about giving these guys six hundred dollars in a game. Max, how many PS fives do you think has been sold since the existence of PS fives? Oh man. How many? Oh, um, let me see. Throughout the world, let's see. I know I could do a quick search, but how many you think? I know. I looked it up. I was, I was how how many? Do you know the other guy? Uh, Fifty I million. I can believe it. Throughout the world, I can believe it. Fifty over over fifty million. I might right. have to get a PS because I, nobody I know have Xbox but me. <laughs> I I got an Xbox. You I got, got Xbox? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, yeah. so we got X. Okay, so on top of that fifty, over the over that fifty million, you got the plus whatever Xboxes, plus PCs or whatever, right? So let's say 
they only sell maybe not even let's say 20% of that 50 million on PlayStation. Let's say they sell 20% around the board on every system. And let's say every system since PlayStation is around that competitive height. Let's say every other gaming system is around 50 million games. So I'm pretty sure about 50 million computers for sure, 50 million Xboxes for sure. So all of these systems say let's about let's say uh each one of them get about 12, no, nah, let's say, well, I wouldn't say 25 million copies. So, oh, let's go half percent, 25 million. So, you're looking mm-hmm. at like 125 million copies sold for $89. 129 times 89 is crazy. And you only want to get these players $600. So, you're looking at your first 100,000 sales, mm-hmm. you done paying the players. I the know. next 24 million sales is all you. How many it, how many college been. football players are there? Um, ten thousand. They saying eleven thousand. Ten or eleven thousand. Right, and they paying them all six hundred. So that's about six. They, they got it on there. It's six million. This is right. Well, that's, that's the right math. But ain't the right amount of money compared to what they gonna make. That's is. I mean, you can't tell me everybody not gonna download this game. <laughs> yeah, they could give them a little bit more than that, but you look at the market; it's crazy. <laughs> It's too much. It's too much. Gain the margin, bro. It's like they're ripping. It's hard rate robbery at its finest. They got to make them ambassadors. If you don't make them ambassadors, the lowest you could do is make them ambassadors. Because they can't be directors. Like, what? What? Are, what are, they, they have to be an ambassador. They have to be either that. Either they can make them ambassador or a crown ambassador or international ambassador, oh, pardon me, ambassador, international bas- ambassador, then crown ambassador. And, and I'm, now I'm catching my tongue. But, but yeah, man, those are the okay. three ambassadors to brand. All right, like, the man above, he Xbox, okay. Yeah, so you got all of these sales you're looking at. You're looking at a market where you're looking at to make a, 120 million sales at $89 a clip. That's crazy. Uh, that's that's the whole reason why it hasn't been out in a while because you remember they had that whole situation where using the player's likeness and there was just a whole big thing on it. Right. But then since the NILs came out, now the, the football game could come back out again because they got to pay them something. Right, because they're making billions annually. I know they, yeah. If they're going to make even more than it costs to develop the game. They're going to make way more than that. I was just thinking about, you know, I'm a GTA guy, right? right. And um, that game is still selling. Right. It's st- that game is, gen- it's like generational. It's like every, it's like people are just discovering it like it's new. That's the most selling game, I believe, of all time, I think now. GTA 5. Right. You ready for that GTA 6? Oh, yeah, you know it. I'm going to make a whole <laughs> channel on it. Dude, right. I, yo, look, look. I have I don't play Call of Duty no more. I can't. I will I refuse to touch that game. Yeah, stop playing God. The kids time. on that game, they don't have no life, man. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they camp out and shoot. I can't play that game. No, the hey, GTA hey, five, I got a whole crew on that game. What's your rep on GTA? Oh man, ah, it's like, like um, seven thousand, eight thousand. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's high, but I had I, I haven't played in a long time. But um, we just you know the get money crew. <laughs> I think my my rep is like seventy four. That's how much I played that game. Like yeah, I can't wait for that game to come out, man. I'm a, I'm yeah, they going first. back to uh, Miami. Yeah, not the cops. What's that old playing school, Miami. You know that whole map. Of, you know, I wanted them to do a whole map of the country. That'd that would be crazy. Dope. <laughs> That'd be madness. Like I don't like it's too bad. I hope this is too much, man. I don't play them kind of games. Man. Call of Duty. I used to like Call of Duty. Okay, when school. They death supports. I stopped playing when they gave people death packages, man. When they you, start giving you death streets, sometimes I'm done playing this game. You, you know, I don't feel too bad, right? Because you're like, damn, I'm a grown ass man playing this game, right? <laughs> Until I got online, I'm like, yo, it's all these old people on here. It right. was like, bro, we like the game. So, right. Especially I ain't feel too bad. Huh? 
Huh? Yeah, especially on Kyle, I just stopped playing when they brought the death streaks in. Because when you killing somebody over and over and over and over and over again, <clears> and you get your chopper gunner, you get your whatever, you got your your assault assault uh, assault plane, whatever assault uh, shru- uh, air assault, and then like they start giving these people EMPs when they were, you know, I'm killing you 12 times. I'm getting my kill streak and you getting the death streak. And now I can't use my kill streaks because you got an EMP going on. Then you got the whole airspace took up with them care packages dropping. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, you're talking about GTA? I'm talking about Call of Duty, bro. I'm talking about oh, Call of Duty. Duty. I can't play it, man. I, 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 I rage streaks. out too much. I started getting mad. I, used to, I was good at Call of Duty, man. But when they start rewarding death streaks, I stopped playing, man. You know you got to stop playing when controllers go flying. Oh, yeah. You just got to hang it up. I went on tilt so many times. I probably went viral from going on tilt. Yeah, I didn't really rage too much. I used to go crazy on Call of Duty. I just, I didn't like it when it got spacey, when it started running on the walls. I stopped playing. And then, of course, all it started to kind of slow down when they was giving them the death streaks. Like, you were rewarding news for dying, bro. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, done. <laughs> I'm finished. Because people, they're cheating. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's like, to me, it was crybabies, yo. Killed the game, bro. They nerfed it, bro. Like, and then, you know, GTA um, in the public lobby, they had to make a clear lobby for people because people stopped playing. You know, you got the uh, griefers on there, like, blowing up everybody. I'm trying to make a sell, and here they go blowing up, and then I had to go get my crew. I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. We spent so much time on that game, man. But I've been playing call um GTA since it first came out. GTA is it's, it's his own beast, man. That's man, I, I I think my favorite one was San Andreas. You San like San Andreas? Andreas? Yeah, I like San Andreas. So, so I, I remember the first one when they bought when not the first one, but when they when they first bought the uh the rocket the, the little van. <laughs> the van rocking. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, what the world GTA did. But look, was, this what you, you, out. you know, on the PC, they you they people got their own maps now. What? Yeah. They got a map of Chicago on there. Um, every major city or whatnot. They got maps. Um, Soldier Boy be playing all the time. Right. You know this quantum computer stuff is about to like hybridize like everything, yo. Like oh, internet man, it's data. Going virtual now. Everything will be virtual reality. Right. So they're going to be mapping out whole cities like on these games like it's nothing now. Japan, they got that now. Right. The digital space is picked up. You heard about what happened with uh, with Gemini. <laughs> the whole world is mad. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Which one? With Gemini. You know what's going on right now? Uh-uh. What happened with Gemini? No. I don't know if everyone's aware of this, but like Gemini, like I don't know for some reason, like people are researching like historical founders, right? And right. like people are researching and, and looking up uh, George Washington, right? But now, like Elon Musk and them are heated because I guess the the computer AI is quantifying, like so it's it's like it's able to do more than we were before, right? So it can generate images off of like word descriptions, right? So. Mm-hmm. They're upset because the Gemini is now <laughs> generating images of all the American founders as so-called black people, aka dark skin, whatever. Uh, uh, us, right? Mm-hmm. Us, whatever, right? They're going crazy. So, you ain't heard of this? So they're like getting upset because the computer is reading the historical documents where it explains how these people look, but like they say it don't fit the picture what they've been putting up for the last like, years. So now they're trying to find a way to crash the system. <laughs> yeah, they I, I know that you could go on there um and do prompts because I'd be doing that. Like the AI art, you could do prompts and stuff and make it whatever you want. It's actually Bruh. getting better. Bruh. Man, I seen the uh <laughs> I seen the funny photos of uh, someone ice someone did a photo of a uh, ice cube and he was laying in bed and that man had his cheeks up. That's just, I said, "What the yeah. hell?" 
Y'all, yeah, I heard that. Oh, LG, I heard that. You make real money oh, yeah. in GTA 6. That's what they, they was. Uh, that's, that's next level. Man. That's yeah, they was editing, they was generating the editing, whatever they was doing the editing. But that, but I mean, like, because of like now the engineers for like Gemini, you know, Gemini is like the biggest like engine, so like search engine, like on Google. But like, um, they want these guys now to go back on what they would say. So, look, it's like a whole civil idiocracy going on right now with Google. Yo, but dude, this AI stuff. They got a program right now, right? It's it's not it's not perfected yet, but it should be perfected within a year or so. You can put in prompts and make your own videos, man. Right, it, it, it'll read from your illustration, so you could just write it. it. It'll generate the whole image, right? So that's what's going. But on. It, it also generate people in the videos, right? So if you got a person crazy. called six foot, right? So the, that's the quantum computer kicking in. So now they want to crash all of that because when you read the documents, because now these quantum computers is picking up information all over the world, right? It's not just centralized information from one point, right? So now they want to crash it all. Because they can't control the data search that these quantum computers pick up. And now all the truth is coming out because it's all in the book. Like, bro, did you know? Look, check out. Did you know when you read the wanted a poster for Napoleon? You know who Napoleon is, right? The French revolutionary guy, the Napoleonic Wars, right? Mm -hmm. When you when you go back and read his original wanted papers, talks about the like the French courts, the British courts, they all wanted to get this guy and they brought out a full description on how he looked because that's how you snatch people up back then on bounty you had to write down their description and it says he was dark very dark skin dark as night <laughs> with straight black straight Wait, dark who? hair napoleon <clears throat> napoleon george the third charles the third charles the fifth all of these guys is brothers. All of these people, all of these people who they talk about in history, they show you a, a, a catfish picture. You read about it. You read about them, and it explains how they look. And it's, they don't say they look pale skin at all. It's crazy. And, how and AI is. stuff. They're gonna integrate AI within uh, these GTA games. It's gonna be AI in that too. Eventually, is everything gonna be virtual? You know how they they testing it out now with those goggles. But they're gonna, they're gonna perfect put you in there, huh? They was pitting, they pitting real. The uh, did you not hear about GTA when they had like um all of these like real people complaining about how they were showing up in the GTA game? Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. They doing that now. I was just saying they doing that now. They stealing people's images and they're pitting you. They're pitting people in the video game right now without your uh, consent. I think it's like a big lawsuit going on right now with GTA over that. Yeah, see, oh, yeah, it's gonna yeah. be hard to control it though. Once them computers take over, it's gonna be hard to control it, right? I mean, you Literally. still need engineers, but it's just so much hey. you can do with just prompts, you right. know. Because the AI is going to what were you about to say, better. um, rot, rat, rot. I was, oh, no, I was saying they uh, they did that with that Florida man character, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they <laughs> did. He's like, man, it's me, a girl too, a couple girls. <laughs> because you know, all this facial recognition stuff going on around. You know, you gotta walk into a building now, get your face scanned and your eyeball scan. That's all going to the quantum computer. So now you're gonna have a whole digital ID like sil like silhouetted for you in a digital space, you know what I mean? A digital reference. So now it'd be easier for games to do that to be made, and that's hot, and that's why they're like implementing like crypto video games, metaverse, quantum computers, security cam, all this stuff is mixing up so the data could pick up everything moving, bro. It's about to get crazy. It's really like all an infringement on our security, though. It is. All that shit crazy. That's, that's really crazy. Yeah, it's just like chat GPT, everybody's using that. Because you can use that to uh, create prompts. Like if you don't know if you're not really good at prompts, you you can train that to do the prompts for you, to do the AI stuff, uh, right. generated uh, pictures and videos. But the video part of um, AI is getting ready to get better. I would say it's about a year away. 
and um, it's gonna be like you can't tell that it's not a it's you can't tell it's an AI video. But that's what they that's what the quantum computer is gonna step in when they get the speed of the receptors to pick up. You won't be able to tell in the motion that it's fake. It's gonna look so it's gonna the motion gonna be so real you won't be able, you won't be able to tell. That's what they're moving towards. But then that's what they're saying. They don't want that, too, because they don't want the computers to start writing scripts to develop for itself without information that's not there. So now they want to kind of, like, manipulate the information, which is going to crash the quantum because now it's going to generate, you know, false uh, information. And it's going to, you know, it's going it's going to error. And it'll blow the whole system up. So it's like they don't know how they want to how they want to program the system now. Look, because... Just like with, with football. Like with football, they're gonna perfect it to the point where the AI computer will tell if you're about to get an injury, right? It and is, tell is. you to cut back. It's crazy, right? You get the percentile chances and all of that. Yeah, but they like I said, it's funny because all because look, everything they wanted to do is turning out to go against and destroy all of the lies they've been hiding and what it, that what they don't want us to know. So it's like it's like a double-edged sword. It's funny right now, bro. It's just so funny right now because they don't know what to do now with it. Cause like if if they let if they allow this thing to grow, like how they expect it to grow, like information will be at, really at the snap of our fingertips. Like literally, and like they can't hide anything. And their biggest goal has been hiding and lying to us for the last hundred twenty years. But um, it's interesting, bro. Like all because of that. So Elon Musk and them, they were like, they were like heated right now. They're heated because Gemini is like one of the main source founders to like this whole quantum computer network. So like they got no real, they don't have no real like uh, decentralized dependency, but they do have like an op- opinion to make. They can't really control it, what I'm saying, but they can just talk about what they don't want us to believe is true now. So, which is going to make them look like hypocrites because they want us now to believe half of what we see online is true and half of it isn't, which is going to discredit the whole thing. So now it's kind of like them trying to hold credibility. This is all kind of like politics being played right now, but it's funny, bro. It's just funny. It's if I if I could tell y'all about the brief that I just got earlier today from my job, y'all wouldn't believe me. <laughs> it's, I say that because you brought up like the like it's. The politics and stuff. Right. Oh, yeah. No, it want to crash everything right now, bro. Like, look, as soon as it start cracking, now we getting all these threats uh, like cyber hacks and cyber security. They want to shut down the whole grid now. But they've been playing these little threats for the longest. I just I just catch little stuff, though, man. But it's, it's funny how how they want to, like, you know, do where, do us right now when information where you start hitting the flow. You know, don't want to hit the main service line and, and, and a hoodie, and then they want to shut it yeah. down and claim that the Chinese did it. You you can't even trust like mainstream. Like if, if you watch mainstream, like it's all fabricated. It doesn't matter which side it comes from, but where you get it from, it's all it's all fabricated stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Because they all want, they all have an agenda and they all push it. Yeah. But that's why I always say, like, sports is a healthy distraction. From all oh, that. yeah, it is. You know, we get to follow this right here, you know, um, and it's a healthy distraction. It's a distraction. That's what it is. It's a good one, though. We get to follow the campaign the second year. Um, I think, uh, did you hear about that analyst? He recently said, um, and he always be talking slick about Colorado, Josh Pate. He always do it. Um, he was like, I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm going to give him eight. He said he's going to give him seven games this year. Who um, is He said is it's just a Tate? whole bunch of, huh? He said it's Josh Tate said this? Yeah. He said he'd give him seven games because he don't know how to grade him. Because there's so many players coming in, so he's on. He said seven games at least. He said it could go higher, but the the minimum is the the absolute lowest is seven games. Right. Just because yeah. their offensive line has straightened out. <clears throat> right. But he said their talent. He, he said he said they got the he got he said they got the most and the best talent in the in the conference. 
Yes, that's what I heard. Yeah, he said they got the most talent in the conference, but it's how they put it together. He said if they put it together, obviously sky's the limit. But he what? said it's some uh what did he say? He said it's some um it's like some he oh he did say this though. We just don't know if Coach Prime is staying. Right, yeah, they're yeah. playing that fence. Well, yeah, they're playing that. Every time the, the flip's about to happen, they're going to play that move, man. Yeah, every year. If every year he stays there, it's going to be like that. We don't know. Well, they should do the same thing it's almost Saban. a compliment, though, because they don't know. They think he's too good to be there, actually. Right. right. It's flattery at its finest. It's kind of is flattery, but they not – without them being – um giving them compliments is actually flattery for them to say that right like he so, should be then they keep mentioning florida state and the university of florida they keep mentioning it but them both I think they, are pretty good i mean they i think they are all right um i don't think they need coaches but they keep putting it out there that those are the likely schools he's going to go to and they just keep putting that thing out there just to keep clicking views yeah, you know they, you know they got to say something to make to make the paper sale or whatever it is, the article. Yeah, he's yeah. what you call a um, he's just a media magnet. Like it's always been that way, and he create he the one did it. Like he said before he got to the league, defensive backs wasn't getting paid that much, so he had to figure something out, and that's what he came with the whole prime time. Um. You know, lights, camera, and action type of vibe, yeah, and it's yeah. ever since then. It's just always been that way. Everybody listens to him. When he used to do the um, commentary for the for the draft, people used to listen to him. His his word meant some. So, it's, so. it's gonna be like this all the time, though, y'all. Like Buff Nation, every time it's gonna be signing time. Like in the beginning, of, like right now, they're gonna always pull this move. Or when he went yeah, in or you something. See that, right? Yeah, they, I, they, yeah, you're right. Right around the signing in spring and mm-hmm. they gonna put that little doubt in the air so the freshmen could make it make it harder for them to decide. Because remember, like only a few high school players sign. Who everybody who committed ain't nobody really signed. So they got till June. So they all they get they all get flip. So you right said now, they have to they have to June to play this year or next year? For ne- uh, I mean, for the, this year, all, all the all the players that's coming to college, they they don't have to they don't have to sign until like June. So a lot of them haven't signed. They committed, but they haven't signed. So all of them players who committed, like they haven't signed yet, and they're gonna show up in the summer. They're all they're all getting ready to sign. So until they sign, they gonna they're gonna push these little rumors out like this. Oh, Prime about to leave. Prime not really gonna stay. Oh, if you go to Colorado, he's gonna leave. Like so, all of the little rookies that's getting ready to play next year, will like you know for this twenty twenty four season, they're gonna mess around, either stay or flip. Like uh, like everybody, like all of these, you know, the whole like Bryce Underwood, all their class. Yeah, they they you can still flip them. You can still flip all of them except um, the ones who signed already. If they sell their uh, their national letter of intent already, you can't. But like the ones who haven't, you can still flip them. So so far, like players like Seedon, Bryce Underwood. I don't know if Bryce Underwood did or like Boo Carter and them. I don't know if they signed yet. But, but they have. I don't mean to cut you off, but but you but you know what I think though. What I like about that is if you if you I feel like if you're indecisive about coming to play for CU, then honestly I feel like you probably it's probably not in your it's it, you probably not meant to come play here because I feel like we want people who. You know, bet on themselves. Like, like. So, what happens if we if we have we start losing games? So you just go on, you know, mentally tap out. Like shit. Like I don't. I wouldn't. I mean, I get what you're saying. I feel you. Like you know, you should have. You should be more. If you really want to be here, you'll be here. But you know, they're young. You know, and after what's going on, you see how it look. All these coaches coming in. You know, sat about to pull up. If it's sat pull up in March, I'm telling you. Hey, them little them, them 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 high schoolers that committed to like Florida and Miami. You already got a few of them ready to flip. I'm trying to tell you, let's sap really be in the building. And like, I wouldn't. I mean, I would. Hey, they if they flip and come, they hell offer. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I get it. I get it. It's, it's flipping season, bro. And like sometimes, 
you know, sometimes you might not be like today, but you'll be a little tomorrow, you feel me? Or like, you can't really, you can't really take it like that. But I feel you, I've been hearing people say that, you know, about players, when they get an offer and they reject it, they shouldn't get, a, you know, another offer. But most of the time they get another offer because <laughs> the coaches want you, they want you, bro. You can play, come on over here. But I see flips happen. I see some flips happening, bro. I think I think it's gonna be like three or four flips that's gonna happen. I really do. <laughs> Especially if Sap, if Sap show up March, like you said, March March first. I definitely see some flips happening. As long as we keep the linemen, man, I'm good. Cause we got enough skill position. Yeah. I hope we get some of them young DNs and. The- Couple of D tackles and Omar White show up, and uh, we get like a little future look. Is there any word on Omar White? No, no updates yet. Something about May only. Mm-hmm. But they haven't really brought up any more charges with him in the court. Like they might let they might drop the case. They need to. They might just drop it because like due process got to take. He can't just. You know, for such, unless especially like you know something like this, he had to get a rain or something. He ain't been in for a rain man like that, so. No, he hasn't. They gonna drop it then. Yeah, I think so. So, he just waiting on that, I guess, and then he's free to go. I heard he's working out though. He That's might good. Have or something. Well, we gonna have a real shooter on the defense. Is he? Is he? It. Um. Is it for sure that he's coming to Colorado? Well, you know, it's something about Syracuse. Go ahead. Yeah, I, no, I was just too. Oh uh, well, I ain't never heard of Syracuse, but if well, y'all yeah. say that, then yeah, yeah, it's like something about Syracuse or something. But I, I, I don't know. I, I doubt it though. But I doubt it because him and Brentley, but you know what I'm saying? It was them too. So <clears throat> no, yeah, I mean, once he, well, I mean, once he um, get everything resolved, he should be on his way then. Yeah, I see him and Brentley. I'm telling you, seeing in them year when they was when they juniors and seniors, oh. nasty. They gonna be nasty, boy. Ooh, I wonder what kind of squad they go. Cause look, Quincy Wiggins gonna be there. Dylan gonna be there until his senior year. Uh, Marion, all they gonna be there. Uh, DJ mm-hmm. McKinley probably gonna be there. Chad, uh, uh, Cordell Russell gonna be there. I keep wanna call this man Chad Russell. Uh, Cordell, I oh mean, come on, oof, they're gonna be killing, man. Oh, Barion gonna be something serious. That that That's dude true. gonna be something real Marion. serious. I'm telling you. In two years, Marion gonna be something though. Oof, they gonna something, they gonna be something you can't handle. No, man. Marion, yeah, yeah, we're looking at they and they get older, man. But this year gonna be solid too, though. Uh, like I said, I, I I really like a man in the in the in their conference for sure. Just on the fact they just got too much talent. Well, what they needed last year, they got they got more than what they needed, bro. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> last year team just literally needed like one more lineman, a couple good kickoffs, and uh, maybe one linebacker. <laughs> yeah, we, we I need, need I need that linebacker room to be straight. And can we please work on the crossing routes? Stopping the crossing routes because. Oh, I'm sure they'll happen. address that. That's a hard route to um, cover one on one. It's the scheme. They, like, if you pass off, if you Robert O's, like, I was hoping Kelly, I think this guy, Livingston, this is what he, this is, he did, like, in the NFL, you got to for sure stop the cross and slant. Like, come on, if you can't stop slants in the NFL, you can't win nothing. So I know, and I looked how that defense, like I said, that defense is just, I can imagine what he, he about to create. I think he about to create something that we ain't never seen before because he could do it. But how they play at robber, they know, ain't no, ain't no slants jumping off, man. With these players we got, like Trav and all these guys, uh, Hodge, DJ McKinney, you know what I'm saying? Kamani snapping to the game. All these other players we got, we got so many as DB. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think we're gonna have no problem. This on how they're gonna be lined up. I don't think it's gonna be too many. You're gonna see some fumbles getting cracked on them slants next year. Watch. You know how safeties come down and crack on the on on the slants. Mm. That's how that's how they're gonna be doing it. Watch. 
safety gonna come down and crack you on the slant or something. That robber gonna come down and crack you on the slant, boy. I'm telling you. Now, uh, Charles Kelly, man, I don't know what he was doing last year, uh, but again, you can't really, you can't really grade too much of that because I'm a, I can't really firm grade them because I know they only had like eight weeks of practice, man. It says you gonna miss tackles, man. A lot of them times they was missing tackles. If you look back at them games or just think back, like you in position, but you blowing the tackle. So is that really coaching or is that execution? Is that talent? Is that being prepared? So you got to look at all that. And I'm like, mindset, mindset, all of that. So you got to look at how all that come. And you can look at off season, not having, you could eliminate half of those checks. So now you just look. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, bro. Man, I, I, need, I need Jimmy Horn to, to take off. I think he will. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Xavier um, talked about it. Xavier recently had an interview. He was just talking about being invited to the uh, combines and stuff. He confirmed what Shador said. He said the problem was, he said he didn't get, remember, he got the camp late because he had to transfer from um, South Florida and stuff. So he got there. He didn't get there in the spring. But he said that um, they had a lot of option routes. And he said the timing wasn't there because, you know, usually that takes a while. He said that's what it was. Right. That was the main reason he was like, um, and then also sometimes the scheme was off. Right, because you're giving everybody options and then you're running crazy looking smash concepts with people blocking downfield. Like, it don't make sense. And it's like to run options, bro. To like really be like a read option receiver and all that, that's that's like your senior receiver, your senior ex receiver, most experienced with the quarterback receiver. That's like mm -hmm. both of y'all know how y'all play, man. Like, yeah, you got a 10 yard dig, but if he clamping you, you're gonna run a six to me. Like, you're not gonna go 10, you're gonna, you're gonna cut six back and then lean up, and I'm gonna hit you with the option. Like, it's just like. When you and you, but you gotta you gotta go through games and practices enough to actually okay you know go through those kind of uh, checks. That's all adjustments. But you can't adjust when you learn it. Like you gotta learn first, and then master it. Then you start making adjustments when you start to see certain things that go against what you're trying to do. But like to to like I said, remember what I was saying? It's so hard to learn to learn the playbook, to learn the checks. And to be able to practice that all in a week is very, 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 very hard. Remember, what I said during the season I was saying that because they was blowing, they was blowing assignments, MAs all day, and they was trying to learn their playbook through the season and make checks, and then scout teams and make checks on top of what they just learned. So now you can't, you can't, you can't really grow that. You can't really grow that, like that uh, resonated experience without having it. You just can't. You just you can't play. You can't know how your man like an alley oop until you play like five hoop games and miss six alleys and then learn how he liked the alley and you throw. So like all of that kind of stuff come with experience. And to say you giving everybody read options like man or option routes or whatever, or, man, you tripping. You tripping. It shouldn't have been none. It should have just been like a check down. It should work check downs. You didn't need to run options. Like, that don't make sense. Like, you just got this offense. You don't even know these guys and you want them to run options. Because, like, if, if if Shador see over the top and then they both see over the top and then they, they, they don't know how many times they've been fooled up with this over the top look and when he see the cover two, is he going to drop a two ball in the cover two or is he going to throw a lead to the middle? So it's like, he jumped to the middle and he throw to the outside, right to the pick, or he he oh, he okay. he played to the two and he throw to the outside incomplete. So it's like when you look at it like that, yeah, Shador not going. He going. That's why he. I, I see more now. I, I was saying that too. Like he must have a lot going on out there. The receivers don't know what they're doing, bro. And it was a skill. Yeah, it that's it, bro. X said it. Well, you gonna hear that, man? Because you just can't. Man, I play receiver. I play tight end. It is it's like, nah, man. I'm just if I just get rid of the receiver, like in three weeks, I'm already out here running. Unless I'm like, hey, man, next time I run it, 
if I see it, this and this and that, it's going to have to be that constantly, 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 constantly. But just to come out and do it, nah, man, you setting yourself up for failure. He said it is ran direct routes and just had them stacked and then just had Shador read the check down and just rope, rope, rope level, like right a ladder. Like Shador could throw in a window, show, create some damn smash plays where they got windows in the ladder because that's where Shador like throwing in the ladder. So give him some other smash concepts and give Shador more slant concepts. He didn't give Shador enough mesh. They they messed up that one time against I think it was what game they uh, when Shador threw the pick Stanford when 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 Travis and uh, Harrison ran to each other on the smash concept they went away from that they wasn't running smashes for Shador it wasn't running mashes for Shador they wasn't even giving them ten yard ends they wasn't running no boxes they was giving Shador everything deep and then like giving them fake screens I'm like bro. Run to his liking. That's why I like him with Pat. Because Pat going to give him a 10-yard a, a box. He going to give him a, a five-yard in. He going to give him a, a mesh all day or, like, bubbles on the out. So, like, I think they're going to do way better than what, uh, what Lewis was doing, man. Lewis was – like, how you running zeros all the time and you running post deep eights and your line can't block? Like, and then when he – remember – I think who was I think it was you uh, when you was talking about the UCLA game when Shador was throwing intermediate and he was throwing really well to the shorts to uh to Javon Antonio. Yeah, he was doing really well with the shorts. Right. And like it went all the way from that. So like when you want to run options and then you want to make the routes continue, you giving Shador more time to get sacked, and then you're giving him less time to really get a playoff. So it was like all of that was messed up. If they really would have kept that kind of stuff, like Tom Brady, like this live like Tom Brady did for his first seven years, ten years, and then throw the check down, intermediate, then bomb them when they come up, man, should have had a way different season, man. Way different season, bro. Like, he went away from that. Oregon game, he did the same thing. Oregon game, he was running them down the field all crazy, but he wake up. But I don't know. It's like, it's stupid, bro. It's stupid. He should have kept this throwing just the regular routes and letting them just catch, running catch like they was doing. But he wanna he wanna um, he wanna give a pro look. Now I was saying he wanna give a pro look and have him run these option plays and social door could look pro offense, you know, the pro offense. Man, he look pro when they winning. Now nah, here trying to run options getting sacked. Like it's just crazy, bro. It's crazy, bro. Like I said, I was I feel Shador, man. Yeah. You no, know, Xavier talked about it. He was like, he was like they, you know, yeah. if they had a if they had a little bit more time, then they probably would have got it down packed. But he said that's what they were doing. Ending up seven on sevens in the world in two weeks, man. You can run the seven on sevens for twelve hours. Good luck with so, that. I got a question for you guys. All right. Do you think why what is, what is the chances that uh, Jordan Seaton I'm not Jordan Seaton, but Jordan Dominic gets back? So what are the chances? Yeah, like, like you think he'll be back? I hope so. But like how likely do you think that? Um if not, he'll probably get invited to a team. Um I think on a simple fact that Prime mess with him, and the people might say, "Oh, he's super boy. okay." Yeah, anyway, Prime balls for him. He did all right. I think I think he might draft the last round, something like that. Maybe sixth round, fifth round, uh, maybe a couple. But it wasn't that many. Really, 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 really. What well, outside linebackers? No, there was some good linebackers this year. But JD did good this year. You know? He did. That's what I'm saying. He had a good season, man. Plus, I mean, like I feel like. No disrespect to the D line, but like he was carrying the D line, I feel like. Him right. and um fifty one. Fifty one was uh what's that D name? Fifty one wasn't that ham? No, no, no. The guy who came over from Tennessee. Oh no, um 
Fifty One was um Mans, right? Corey Mans, that Mans. I wasn't him. He, he's. I think he's he's a linebacker. Yeah, he's linebacker. Sorry. He's a linebacker. I think yeah, that's um, Mans. You talking about um? Who was his name? Juju. Yeah. He had a, he had a good. Juju was fifty one. Yeah, he he was fifty one. Juju, okay. he 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 was he was when he was, I, I said at Oregon game he didn't make a tackle. He played the whole game and didn't make one tackle. I, I don't Oregon. think he played that much in that game. He played Oregon game. He he played the he whole played the Oregon game. game. Yeah, he played. Uh, make one see him out there. No, he was out there. <laughs> he was he was he out there? Yeah, he was out there. They technically took him off because he wasn't doing nothing. They was blowing. I think they took him off because he was doing crazy stuff, man. Like that's why he didn't play like for the rest of the season because he was just doing too much. That was the last game he was suited up. But that's again, that's because he got there a month, man. I mean, that's not about to work, man. What the world? I'm in college. I've been here a month, and I'm in a game. I'm gonna be like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. That's not how it works. This is not how this is not how things work, people. You don't just go to college and start playing football monthly. <laughs> oh goodness gracious, man. Juju's all right, man. I, but that game, he just he didn't show me nothing. I, I watched that game, so I'm like, man, big guy. I look at the stats. This nigga, I said he didn't get no tackles, man. I, I turned that I turned that game off. Yeah, it was. Well, the Oregon game, yeah. yeah it, was, it was like. I was mad as hell. Yeah, that Oregon wow. game. That, I tell you, the toughest game was that um, Stanford game. Yeah, I already know it. That Stanford game was like. That, I don't like what. Ha- I don't know what. I still don't know what happened. All kinds of stuff happened. Fell asleep. You know what I did notice? The, during the first half, they was only sending three at Shador. And then in the second half, they started sending four. So maybe the offensive line got comfortable in the second in the first half and then just thought it was sweet. And then I think it's play design. Play design, control of the game. They yeah, adjusted. Yeah, they adjusted at halftime. Stanford did. Yeah, mm-hmm. Stanford did. They kind of adjusted. See, you didn't know how they was going to come out. Again, I, I gave them so much refs. Refs giving them boys about 200 yards on offense really good. Really got me mad. Man, the refs was hating on CU all year. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, like they can't. They couldn't have let a bunch of C, a bunch of C, CU, uh, HBCU. That dang group of five players come up to power five and play discipline and execute football. They couldn't have been the least penalized team in the conference. They had to be. Like, cause they, like I said, they had to keep the look. I said it right when they started throwing flags. I said, oh, here it come. They about to flag us out. I just know. Just, I can just see it sometimes. Like, I, just, I, just, I can just see shit. You know what I'm saying? Come out and see it coming out. You think you Especially – Especially with that, uh, with the Vegas and all that stuff, like placing them at three wins or two wins or whatever. I, I don't like that kind of stuff because I feel like, I feel like like Vegas, they really do have some say so and and like some right. influence in the game or something. Like I feel like there's some under the rug type stuff going on. Right. And, uh, because like when, who's when Shiloh did that hit on that UCLA player that wasn't targeting when Travis caught that touchdown. That wasn't incomplete when Travis was running down the sideline. He was, you know, way, he was like close to stepping out. That was not out. And, and even if it was out, you let the play develop and then you review the play. You don't just call it dead, right. you know, while the play's still going on because. Yeah. I thought the ref was going to grab him for a minute and stop him from running. When the ref was on the sideline and he ran by, when Charis ran by, I thought the ref was gonna feel like he was gonna grab him while he was blowing the whistle dead. I mean, like from that, bro, from that Stanford, I'm not gonna ever forget that Stanford game, that PI they get that the PI, but that uh unnecessary roughness or the unsportsmanlike conduct they gave Travis to keep them on the field to go down yeah. there and tie the game. 
I'm like, bro, really, bro? I'm like, okay, oh, looking for anything anyway. They when 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 they when they called when they called old boy on that hit on punk when he smashed him on when they were smashing stand, they were smashing stand for hard. I remember that gig. Like I remember they was coming out smashing, hitting them hard. The crowd was pumped. I could flip it through the TV, and then oh boy smashed oh boy on punk on punk coverage, and he got up and he wiped his nose, and then the ref threw a flag. <laughs> Said, uh, said, doesn't say roughness on the tackle. How could you call a tackle? <laughs> he didn't body slam him. He didn't spear him. He didn't do nothing extra. He just ran straight through him. I mean, you remember that? Y'all remember that hit on punt? If you go hit? back on Stanford, that Stanford, Stanford game. Remember that punt? They hit on punt. They got hit. They got flagged for unnecessary roughness. I forget who it was. I think it was Hopkins or somebody. Nah, I probably had to call. I probably had to hop off the game when they started coming back. So that's probably why I don't remember. It. That was that was sparking. <laughs> that sparked Stanford's comeback. Stuff like that sparked Stanford's comeback. And then even the like I said, the last drives, they didn't they didn't stay on the field because they made a play. They stayed on the field because the ref threw a flag. Yep. Like, yeah, I do remember like, that one now. They did that. All, they did that like three series. Four five series before that, but it, that was a major one because that was like the one they needed to get off the field to win the game. But like, I'm like, man, the rest was rigging that whole game, bro. The rest of the all they, they couldn't control it. They came out, blew them out so fast. As soon as soon as soon as Stanford got a little breath or something, then the rest helped them out. Like, they they back in the game, bro. You know, man, we got the rest on our side. We want to come back. Man, I'm so. Oh yeah, I said I can't help but to say that about that Stanford game, bro. It said everything. It said everything on how they looked at CU, bro. Like it, it set was, the it, it it set the blueprint. That that was the blueprint right there. Mm-hmm. Let your door get hit late. You know what I'm saying? Don't throw the flag. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? Don't call the holes when they all that. You know what I'm saying? But when they do anything, throw the flag. Anything. Anything. I can't. I had to team up off that side. And I, I, I had to, I to beat the hell out with them refs. They was hitting, they was hitting Shador late, and he was, they was not throwing no kind of flag, no nothing. Yeah, right. no, nah, I had to came up off that side. Man. They had to see me. Man, they hell were, no. They were saying it in the booth. They like, man, I think that was late hit on the quarterback. There's all the refs not going to call the late hit yep. on Shador. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Remember nope. that? Nope. There's a bunch of games they said that like that, man. A bunch. They just stop. They just stop saying after everybody caught the hint. Like they ain't about to throw the flag, Joe. So, and, and, and that's what. And that's what I'm saying when I say like I think there's like some under the table deals going on, especially with like how Vegas is setting up on you know five wins. It's like oh, you're gonna make sure they only win five wins. What do they but have? I, I don't know. Now? They I have so five, think, and half, five and a half now. Yeah, five and a half. I'm like, how the hell you win five and a half? Is it you win five? You you get six. How you win five and a half? Somebody explain that to me. I know, right? And how they come up with that, really? I don't know. They could they and they and they almost like on point with it too. Too yeah, it's almost like it's rigged. That's what that's what I'm trying to take. Like it's rigged, yeah. That's what I'm trying to take. Right? Can nobody be this right all the time? It's, it's a lot, man. But you know, people because, well, when CU beat TCU, Vegas lost a lot of damn money. They lost a lot of money. Right. So they probably was like, I mean, they got to come get it back in blood. <laughs> yeah, they had 700 million run through their fingers. Must have see you. That's a lot of bread, man. 700 mil. But yeah, they know. So it's, it's, just, it's weird, man. It's just. Mm. You know, it's yeah. real, bro. It's just too real, bro. I hope they kind of see a little better, man. Like I said they last, they last year record could have been a whole lot. Like as a player, you got, like, just, just imagine being on that team, bro. And then I, just imagine this zero zero. You on the field, you look at the clock, and you just got beat three points. Every week, you look at the clock, you just got beat four points. 
Yeah, yeah it's supposed to be. You look at the clock, you got to be seven points. Dang, one week got to be, oh, I got to be 30 points. Like, man, I, can play, I know we're going to be good next year. I know we're going to be it, good it, next year. It just shows you, like, how much talent this team has and how much, um, you know, how, how, how much training they, they go through and, and everything like that. I mean, you you talking about some of the top teams supposedly in the country, and they're barely escaping the team that was put together less than eight months ago. Right, right. Let's and and you barely winning. Like, 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 come on, bro. And and you you barely escaping the team, and they don't even have a offensive line. But you're telling me Shador is not one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And to me, the way that you gauge a quarterback if you gave him based off of like how he performs under pressure right because right. anybody can go like i can get behind that damn that damn line and throw a touchdown to travis hunter because travis hunter is that good right but when you can do that with un- under pressure it's like hands down like shador is like the best quarterback in college football and he will be the number one draft pick like guaranteed, because yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't see no, I don't see no damn uh, Caleb Williams doing that. I don't see no Bo Nix doing that. None of them. They all go to the NFL and they think they're gonna go to some established team and they're not. They're gonna go to some rinky dink team and they're gonna be <laughs> with the all offensive line that's not dominant and they're gonna get exposed. And it feels yeah. pressure real. <laughs> Just like we said, what we say, a Michael Parsons and a shit. You know how fast that boy is? Yeah, getting hit by a Michael Parsons. Yeah, all right. <laughs> don't say you that. See how, you see how he look? So please don't say that. Yeah, I'm not getting hit by him. I would slide or something. But see, one thing about Parsons is I don't think he got no life, yo. I think he studied film from sunup to sundown. <laughs> That's what I think he does. So he's always in the right spot to get you. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not good with him. Imagine getting hit by him unaware of it, unaware of the hit coming. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're not aware of the hit coming. That's that's when you're out the game. Oh, God. Bro. Yeah, Caleb. Uh, what is that? They not. I, I was saying that too in here earlier on in the year. I was, I was saying the same thing. The I, way I see Shador take pressure, I don't think any quarterback in college can do the same. I was no, they can't. And and that's you see that's that. why it, it makes me so angry when these idiots get on here talking about some a Bo Nix, Bo Dacious. I'm like, what's so? What do you mean? Like, let's put him behind that CU <laughs> offensive <laughs> behind that CU offensive line, and let's see what he do. Well, they're gonna yeah, break that boy neck out there. I tell you who was a bad dude, man. That Johnny football dude. He was a Johnny bad dude, football, but he got caught up. He couldn't stay out the clubs, man. He couldn't stay out the clubs, man. Johnny, man, football, 2013. He just he, did you see it? Did you see his in- interview? With, with Shay J? Yeah. Yeah, I, I seen some of it. I seen him shout out see you. I was like, yeah, that's what's up. He said he'll um, love to play for Coach Prime. Man, Prime if it, if he had to play now, he said, of course. He said Prime helped him out during his career, like, you know, when he was low and whatnot. Prime had some good things to say to him when he reached out to him. Right. Prime, that's from Mazel, man. Like, back in the day when he was in college, you know, Prime was uh, analyzing, doing his little TV stuff in 13. And he was doing uh, his his, his, uh, reality show, too. He was telling all the secrets. He said every team got a bag, man. He's right about that. Every team got a got a bag for you, mm-hmm. and they got the bag man around. Either they got a bag or an envelope. Especially in Texas, mm-hmm. definitely in Texas. What you where you think it started? Yeah, I mean every <laughs> every school in Texas got a bag man. They got a billionaire that don't mind donating money. This is a tax. Well, they do it underhanded. So there's so many ways they can get. They it was so many ways that they. They channel the money to you. Sometimes they'll donate to your church, you know, stuff like that to get the money to you. But they own a business and then they had a business donate you some money. Yeah, Johnny was cold, man. But it's just that when he got to the league, just a little too much partying. That's what happened. He was cold in college, though. 
Yeah, he had that run that year. Remember that that year they went to the bowl game? All right, he was all on TV. Johnny Manziel. Johnny he football. Was party, uh, he, was, he was a party animal then in college, man. Then he took he took down the Heisman Trophy, didn't he? Right, the freshman. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they changed the rule, you know, and then he won it. I was like, man, that's Jack, because, like, really, like, you can't, I mean, you can't, that's the one thing I was like, I was kind of like, you can't, like, all the other freshmen, they couldn't win because they was freshmen, like, that was kind of jacked up, like, you know, because it was only awarded to sophomores, and uh, you had to be at least a sophomore to win the Heisman, up to, like, 2000, yeah, he, what? He won. He won as a junior, didn't he, or a sophomore? Nah, he was <clears> a freshman. He was, yeah, he, he, he won it as a freshman? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that guy was cold, man. And he can run. Something else. Yeah. I like that. This run. little bandit running around like a gopher. <laughs> oh, yeah. He up. was all that. It was just that it happens. He got to the bright lights, and um, that was it. The bright lights. Um, he succumbed to the bright lights. But that was we always that was, that was the only concern everybody had with him, though. We was like, man, if he make it, is he gonna be all right, man? Because you know the pros, they love the party. <laughs> He was partying in college too, but the media um, didn't talk about it. He was hiding it, but he had he had a, a party problem in college. Yeah, yeah man, big, he, he big up CU like that's a, a couple million people seen that. Yeah, he big up CU. He big well. He know Coach Prime. That's why. Oh no, the biggest one was the LeBron with the kicks in the All Star game. That's crazy. Yeah, the kicks in the All Star game. Yeah, well, you know that's Prime. You know they he grew up watching Prime. Well, actually, he was young, but he grew up watching Prime. Yeah, no, he was he was there. He because he's like three years younger than me. You know what's crazy? He's playing with people because I know for a fact um, Rick Brunson's son was in the All Star team. You know Rick Brunson that used to play for the Knicks. His son is in the All Star team now. And when he first got an autograph from LeBron, he was three years old. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? That's yeah. how long LeBron been in the league. Man, I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you. I look back 2000, 2003. I mean, I'm looking back at that like, man, I was like twenty something. Yeah, that, no. That's he man. was um, Rick Brunson, and um, he's like, you know, I guess sign my kid stuff. The kid was three years old. Now he's playing with him in the All Star game. That's crazy. Crazy, bro. Time really do fly, man. Just think, a yeah. hundred years ago went by fast, and we, that ain't nothing to us. Forty years went by like it was even quicker. Like you couldn't even recognize it. That's that's what they used to tell us when we were younger. Like you better enjoy it now because it it moves fast. They weren't yeah. lying. We talk about nineteen ninety like it was yesterday. That was thirty years ago. <laughs> Dude, I remember when year two thousand hit. Remember we right. thought the um the we thought that we were gonna go in black. You remember that? Yeah. I was it, I was outside looking in the mountain, seeing what the lights were gonna cut out. Like, yeah. yeah. I was like, wait a minute, the lights didn't cut out. Okay, because they said the grid was gonna you remember the year two thousand bug. Mm-hmm. They said it was something with the bug and whatnot. With the Y two K. I remember that. When the year two thousand when the year two thousand hit, I was in uh, Times Square. 2000, I was a senior in high school, sipping champagne on my porch with my little moms. It was a Y2K. Yeah, we were sitting there like, okay, something getting ready to go down, but the hell with it. We were just going to sit here and watch it, right? And nothing happened. Just went home. Right, right back in the house. <laughs> like, that happened. I knew they was lying. <laughs> that was 24 years ago. Man, wow. Yeah, yeah, I was man. like, man, then, you know, I'm thinking back at LeBron's season. Because um, what's his name was asking him, the Joker was asking him. He was like, um, in your first All-Star game, who were you playing with? Joker was just recently asking him. And he said, uh, matter of fact, my first All-Star game was in Denver. He's right about that. It was in Denver. And uh, he was just talking about the players, Kobe, Jordan, you know, all those people that was uh, – back in the day and he's he's probably i think he might be a year away from retiring i think he's gonna next year gonna prob- probably be his last year he gonna have like a a farewell tour i think that's what he's gonna do that's in two 
for sure. Three, maybe. Four, that's a stretch. Four, we're going to see him play bad. I mean, he's still dominant. Yeah, like, but you know, 39 to 42, that's a big, that's that's a that's a drop off. Wait, how old is he? 39. This is his last good one. Okay. He's about to be Damn. 40 in a minute. Them knees going to be for real now. He might keep, he, man. He can jump. He jump out the gym still. He'd still jump out the gym, but he might be a little bit more sore getting out of bed in the morning. Mm-hmm. So he's probably so feeling it. Yeah. It's a young man's game, just like football. Definitely. It's basketball. Yeah, definitely basketball, football. Curry close to retiring. Ain't that crazy? Bro, you know, play Curry. He, he Curry is close to retire. I think he probably going to retire eventually in the next couple years. He's going to be done. But see, like huh. Curry, but Curry game, I see him playing way longer. You see him playing way longer? Yeah. I, I see Curry. He could probably play until he's in his 40s. Is he in the Olympics? I believe he is. I believe he is. Curry playing this Yeah, one? yeah. I think he's in. He probably would have played his last one. But yeah, I, I can see, you know, he jump shot, jump shooting. He just ran around. He don't really dunk or nothing like that. Like, yeah, I see, I see stuff playing pretty good. Thirty-eight. I see he gonna, it's gonna be say your jumper. It's, it get easier to shoot. You know what I mean? You can always have your jumper. Old is people. it? Is it me or defense ain't really being played like it used to be? Ain't no defense in, in the NBA no more. It's, like it's why not? League. Like why ain't no defense? It's a dribbling league now. Huh? It's like the, it's a dribbling league now. It's like the globe charters. No I one guess to put fans in the seat or something, but the fans appreciate yeah. that, you know, that back and forth game, you know? Right. The only person I think that can really play with the 90s players' play style LeBron. today? LeBron. No. Maybe. I ben think LeBron Hunter. can. Maybe. Maybe. But don't go too crazy. I'm just going to say it. James Harden. James Harden? James Harden, yep. He would be the only kind of play style hooper that could really probably play. But he looked Harden like back. he played back in the day, the way he be looking. He <laughs> like he played like a 70s player. <laughs> a boy beard to his ankles. The boy. beard and everything. I'm trying to tell you so hey, he got that. All he needs is the force. big fro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he had the fro. He looked like a smurf out there. Is hey. he still playing? Yeah, yeah. Harden's still playing. Yeah. Uh, for real, it's Harden. So the only reason why I say Harden is because his play style. You see how he play? Like he 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 stunt, he jab, cut straight to the basket. Jab, cut, pull up on you. Like precise cut, executing like like precise move. Very very efficient, efficient moves. Nothing wasted. Like his play style. Like that's how they played in the nineties, man. Like you don't see a bunch of even Allen Iverson, when he crossed Jordan, like, that was getting beat in the 90s on defense. Like, that was embarrassing. Like, right. Jordan, today, that's normal, getting beat like that. So He crossed Jordan up twice. Right, he crossed Jordan twice. But, like, you see players get, get crossed hips like that all the times in today's NBA, like, all the time. And, and that day, back then, that's like, you, you ain't got, man, but Jordan still recovered and was right there, like, wow. And that's show how yeah. much defense Jordan Playing got. that defense. Right. But if Jordan didn't recover like that, Jordan would have lost all respect in defense just off that one play, like straight nuts on head. Like, But see, check with. this out. Not only was he the lead leader in scoring, he was also defensive first team, him and Scottie Pippen. Man, defensive first team. And offense first team. MJ jam you up, man. You ain't going nowhere with that rock. I'm trying to tell you. MJ had them big old hands, swipe ball coming up out of there. The interception steals. But like this is different game, man. Hand checks and like being able to have to just cut and go, like score in three seconds, two seconds all the time. Like everything's a two second move. Like there is no uh today they four five second with the ball, passing it to nobody. They get the ball back and then ISO and then get a get a get a screen and then try to dive 
and then hopefully kick out to somebody that can shit. That's garbage, bro. That is so garbage hoop. I'm so sick of that hoop, bro. Like, when you get the ball, two, three seconds, two seconds pass, two seconds pass, you already know what you're doing with the ball. Find open people. And when you get the ball more than two seconds, you're going to the hole, either dunking on somebody or you about to pull up and shoot. Like you got a team that's playing like that. Every time they move the ball two seconds, they score three seconds. They're going to score better than teams that's trying to pick and roll, set up screens, set up ISOs over and over, kick out ISOs. Like, that stuff gets ugh. Today's basketball, bro, that's today's basketball, bro. Like I know. It's like I was looking at the All-Star game. I said, how they scored 200 points? They, how they you just score 200 points, man? They <laughs> shooting threes wide open, like not. Playing. It ain't no defense being played. None. Nobody. They just take a wide open shot. Back I think in, Iverson recently said if he was in today's game, he'll score forty a game. He's right about that. Oh, yeah, I say he scored fifty. Well, nobody stopping AI. Should he? Should Jordan score forty a game in this game? Right, because every time he touched the ball, he's firefly. He either scoring or passing, bro. These guys, they like I said, it's just like. The game, the game of the '90s was way faster because they, the way the minds. I play, I kind of played in both areas, and what, so I understood how I was taught to get to play in the '90s. You had to pass quick, pass, move the ball, ball movement, always moving the ball, find the open guy, know where the open guy is moving, find that you get the ball open, you shoot, you miss, rebound, you get the ball, you cut, you score. It ain't no crossover. Look for the pick. Mm. Roll off, nah, man. Like the way they play in the '90s and the '80s too, but the '90s really they move the ball so fast. You see, pass here, pass there, pass here, layup, score, pass here, pass there, shot, rebound, pass out, shot, score. Like now, you don't see that. Now you see dribble up the court, bum 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 bum. Everybody, wait, wait, wait. Come and give, come give me a screen. Then the screen kick off. Everybody know where the ball going. The ball go to the corner all slow. Somebody go out there, D up, duh, duh, go back over, set up another ISO. Somebody go to the hole, get fouled. That's, I'm sick of that. That's garbage. That's so much trash. That is not basketball. <laughs> you dribbling <laughs> the ball over to the guy and hand it to him. What is you doing? Dude, everything is, is different, man. Even in boxing, the fighters don't want to fight each other, man. Poor what's his name? He retired. Oh, you know, yeah. um, Shakur Stevenson retired. As Wait, young as he is, he's retired. He don't want to see <laughs> Even though I think that was a a way for him to rub people the wrong way, maybe they get to fight him. He was like, "Man, I retired on y'all, man. Nobody wants to fight him." Um. Uh... Like why why don't they want to fight each other? Where, where, where is these big fights at? Like it's crazy. Keep beating somebody up everybody to, coming in. Somebody has to lose. I mean, you can always come back. Mike Tyson is like I consider him one of the greatest. He lost fights. Ali lost fights. Like it's a part of the game, you know. It's, bro, we want to see when you how you come back off after you. Right, how you come back? You. Let's see how you come back now and build. Like they don't want to do that. Like. Like you got you got all these fighters out there, but nobody wants to fight each other. It's just it's crazy. I mean, I, that's what's making me not want to watch it anymore. Yeah, I kind of stopped. That that I thing died it. with Mayweather, man. When he retired, man, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, Mayweather set up some good fights. He kept he kept he kept the sport of boxing kind of, you know. After Tyson, it really wasn't going to be another Tyson or Muhammad. Yeah, you know, you know, maybe did all right. But today, I like today. They, they, they trying to do something, but I don't like how Shakur he retired. I didn't know he retired, bro. That's crazy. Well, uh, Sir Ken said that was talk. He really didn't retire. He's still under contract. He could still retire though. But yeah, he if he, he yeah he's under contract. How many more fights he got on his contract? Because nobody's fighting him. He's just sitting dormant. Like back in the day. Fighters that take no less than two months off. That's it. And they back fighting. Right. Now, they can go a whole two years and don't fight. That's it's crazy. crazy. They think they Floyd, but Floyd was getting $100 million fights, though. Oh, he got two fights left? Okay. Well, he can easily get that, like, honor those two fights. 
I would like to see him fight um, Shakur fight uh, Devin Haney. Haney gonna put hands on that boy head. Yeah, I just want to. I I don't know, man. I, Shakur, like when he first started, he was small. He he's actually gotten better. He's gotten he's gotten better as the time go on. Like, but <laughs> but I give it to what's his name? What's the what's the um Mexican fighter name? Um, the one that got beat up. The one that fought Javante. He uh, fought Javante even though, even though he lost, Ryan, he got heart. Huh? Ryan, Ryan Rayola, Ryan, Ryan, Rayola, Ryan Rayola, Garcia. Ryan, Ryan Garcia. Even though he 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 lost the fight, he still <laughs> wants to fight everybody. He don't mind fighting everybody. I he like can't Leo. Fight. I like Leo Santa good. Cruz too. Huh? He gonna he gonna get hurt out there. Yeah, but he ain't afraid to fight nobody. Like the only reason why he got that Javante fight because he called them out. That's the only reason why he got it. That man cannot fight at all, man. What um uh uh Ryan? Right, that boy can now he ain't got no chunkums at all. You will you you question his chin? I just his whole everything. I think he's a whole actor. Think you think he's a, yeah, a lot of people he got that label on. He's a social media boxer. Yeah, he ain't no real boxer. He he's trying to get in the ring and box professionals and get beat up though. He not no real boxer. Yeah, their gate, they did set records at the gate. Garcia versus Tank. Right. You know, that's, that's like Mike Tyson thing. said back in the day, you owe it to each other to fight. Like how you gonna get those big money fights if you don't fight? Just like what's today, for example, perfect example. Um uh the um Wilder. He was supposed to fight um the guy from England, Anthony Joshua. Mm-hmm. But that that fight never happened, and then both of them lost. Right. I want to see them both at like I wanted to see them fight no less than two years ago. No, three years ago. Hey, you that would have been fight? the height of the excitement. Now it's not. I don't want to see the fight now. Did you see the fight when the old boy played a uh, when he fought the guy from Africa? What's his name? Heavyweight champ name? Um, the Irish guy, the Gypsy King. Yeah, he fought the dude from the dude. He, he Mike Tyson be training him too. That boy gonna be something. Yeah, he is. He got a lot of potential. Mike Tyson working with him. Yeah, he he gave a Gypsy King or something to think about. I see that fight live. Watch that, but I was like, oh, he, he got with it. Yeah, Gypsy King pulled out that fight though. He got some skills though. You know, he he um trained on, in Crunk Gym under Emmanuel Stewart and them. He 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 didn't do nothing to that guy. You watch? You watch the fight? Yeah, yeah. yeah he couldn't do nothing with him, but he won on point. He um was it a stoppage? No, wait a minute. Nah, they, was, they gave they it was they the really point. Cheated. Well, no, nah, because it's. They didn't want to give him. No, it wasn't even yeah, that. he won on points. He didn't, he didn't win the points. He had he didn't he didn't connect more. He didn't have nothing. They just gave him the fight. He that didn't happened have too. Then he, but, but you know he the champ. He had to knock him out. They're not gonna give you the belt. Like that's one thing people. I understand why. That's why everybody like why well, because like he was a champ. In order to take a belt from a boxing champ, you're not gonna win on a split. Even if like you won more punches, you still might lose because they're gonna want you to knock them out. That's the same thing when they was talking about what uh Haney uh, get uh against uh Levachenko. And they was talking about how Levachenko should have won that fight. Man, come on, man. He the champ. You gotta knock him out. Like to take the belt, straight. You gotta knock, you got ten county, and then you lost the first seven rounds, first eight rounds. You ain't about to win. You gotta knock him out. If he would have knocked Haney out. For sure, he would have won. But like, you now they say Father Time is undefeated. Like he's getting older, and um, but like so I said, uh, Tyson Fury is getting older. Um, he got one more big fight in him. He was Just old when more. he started, huh? He was old when he started. Yeah, he got one more in him. Tyson Fury. I think he gonna use that for an excuse. He was say his chain, his chain turned to dust. How old is he? 38? 30 something? Um, he's up there. He's up there. Would he mid thirties or yeah. early thirties? Mid Let me see. Tyson Fury. Let me see. He might just look too he might look older than what he is. You know how some people just look older. No, he's thirty five. 
Oh, he's mid thirties. Yeah, yeah, he got another fight left, and he's thirty five. He got what another about, couple fights left in him. Yeah, yeah, he got, yeah. So got Man, he was a money. drinker too. You know, um, that'll wear you out as well, especially if you're an athlete. That's why, if you notice, Floyd never drank alcohol or Dion. Right. That's why they were that. It, that actually gave them a benefit. Right. That liquor messes me different, man. I don't drink either. That stuff messes with you. Way different. Yeah, I don't um I don't I don't drink um heavy alcohol. Like uh, maybe a beer here and there, but the, I'm talking about the the liquor. um the liquor. Oh, no, nah, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. Yeah, My system true. don't take well to it. Not anymore. That Hennessy and stuff can't do it. So, you know, he he Tyson, you know, he come from drinking. So he, he well, you know the G he come from a, a family of gypsies. So you know how you know the bare knuckles fighters. Mm-hmm. You know, that's his family. They, they were all bare knuckles fighters. You know, he was named after Mike Tyson. That's his dad right. named his dad named him after Mike Tyson. That's why his name Tyson, Tyson Fury after Mike. Right. His dad was a huge Tyson fan, yeah. Well, and Tyson good. knew it too. He knew it because um, I, I think he met his father back right. in the eighties. Right. People forget how much influence Tyson had, man. Yeah, and he was saying to Tyson when he was interviewing, he said, "I know your family is bare knuckle fighters." And um, as a matter of fact, you know LL Cool J, right? His great 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 uncle was a, uh, a he was a former slave, but he was a bare knuckles fighter. Uh, Tom Mullineau. He was a he was a bare knuckles fighter too, and um, he was like one of the the first best out here. But then he went over to Europe and stuff, and he died young though. He had a drinking problem. Right, I remember him. Yeah, about, uh, right yeah. so called slave, whatever that's supposed to. Yeah, that's that's like indentured boxing. Believe it or not, boxing is my first sport, but my mother wouldn't let me box. I remember the day too. Look, I, she wouldn't let me box, but let me play football. So I'm like, "Come on, man, let me oh, play. Yeah. Let me box." She's like, "Nope." And then one day, she showed up to the gym. I got my um, I had a bloody nose. Yeah, my dad, no other boxing. day, no other day until she show up. She's like, "I told you, you're not boxing." <laughs> She's yeah, like, "You mom, ain't she boxing," because you know she had to sign off, you know, for me to box. My mom started tripping on my sports around like junior high school. And so I, I told her, I, said, box when I, was young. I told her the one day that you come, because you never come, right? The one day that you come over to, to watch me, I, my nose will get busted. She said, because uh, that's God. That's a uh, that's intervention. I didn't want to box because of Muhammad Ali. My dad had me boxing. My mom wasn't tripping. But I just didn't want to end up like Muhammad. That's when well, he had, came down with all of that, 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 uh, whatever he was going through all right you know how he took most of his punishment i mean they said it was a foreman fight well he took most of his punishment in training because what he used to do was he used to take those hits so he can get ready for the fight and um beating training too and something happened in that um the fraser fight right it, it wasn't the former fight. It was the um, Bill Frazier. No, Larry Holmes. Larry, Larry Holmes, Holmes pummeled him, man. That was a that was a massacre. Larry Holmes, yeah. But Mike Tyson avenged it, though. He avenged the loss because Mike Tyson was young when it happened, and Customato um, put Mike on a young Mike Tyson on the phone with Muhammad Ali, and he said, "Champ, I'm going to avenge your loss when I get older." And he did just that. And then right before uh, the Larry Holmes fight, Muhammad went over to Mike Tyson's corner and said, you going to do that for me? He said, I got you. And he almost killed Larry Holmes. He beat Larry Holmes like he was a runaway. He beat Larry like he stole something, man. Man. Mike wasn't playing when he was, what, 17, 18, 19? Wasn't even a grown man. Yep. He won the title. He wasn't even um, legally of legal age to drink yet. And he won the title. Mike was By the up. time he was 21, he unified the title. That was never. Let me tell you something. 
that will never happen again. You'll never see it again. You know why? Because <clears throat> he fought early on, because I used to fall, he fought three to four times a month, right? To build his um record up. He was fighting three to four times a month until he got his first title shot. And that's why he became the youngest type. That'll never happen again. You'll never see it again. He was 19, knocking grown men out like they was paper. Dude, 21 years old, he unified the title. Knock everybody out in the world at 21. That's something else. Yeah. 21 years old when he beat Michael Spanks. Knocking out grown men, though, with grown men. in their face. Grown Boom. men, yeah. Knock your beard off your face. I'm going to knock your beard off your face. Bow. Hit him with that overhand hook every time. And with that, oh, that uppercut, man, I'm talking about that, that, remember that game, Mike Tyson punch up? Can never beat Mike Tyson in that game. You said, don't play with my boy Larry. Let, let me tell you something, though. Larry Speaks or Larry Holmes? The reason why Tyson beat up Larry Holmes the way he did is because he promised Muhammad Ali as a kid that he would avenge his loss. He promised him. And he did it. He did it. Because he didn't, he said that beating was unfair. Like Larry really beat, put a beating on Muhammad Ali. But Muhammad was, he was already like, and he was beat up a few times. But I think that was the last one that did it. Yeah, I that was the Muhammad. last one. That was the I, last beating he took. Yeah, yeah that, that Frazier, both them Frazier fights, man, he was, he got beat up. Both of them did. Both of them had to go to the hospital. How would I almost died? It was they shouldn't be fighting. It's always saying you shouldn't be fighting when you fought Holmes. Yeah, it was that first fight that both of them had to go to the hospital. They were near death. Um, I, I think either they plugged him with something in that hospital or he really, really, really was bad. Oh, day. and somebody also said he used to use di he he used diuretics a lot when he was training so he can cut the weight. And they said that may have done something to him as well. So I don't I don't know, but I know that, you know, um, that was like uh, I remember in my gym that I used to go to. They used to talk about it. They said he used to take diuretics, and my old coach. This is crazy, yo! Like the guy that used to own the gym. I found out maybe about. I don't even know if I should say it. I don't even know if I should say it, but he's infamous in history. I didn't even know it. You remember the day um, Malcolm X got shot? Well, you remember the video, the famous video they show when he's being taken to the hospital? And there's this like some ruckus outside of the Autobahn ballroom. Mm -hmm. And this guy picks up this thing and walks out. That was him. He's a former Newark police officer. There's so much going on at that time. That's crazy. And he owned a gym. He owned a boxing gym. They all was tight then, back then, though. Mm -hmm. They all was tight. They, all, they was trying to figure it out because they were trying to be a voice. No, but people were trying to say he was the real shooter. What, the gay shot said he was the real shooter? Yeah, shot they trying to, yeah that's what they were saying. I, I saw a documentary on it. I was like, nah, no way that old dude was a shooter. They were saying he was a shooter. Dick Gregory said he shot a book, mechanical guns from the ceiling. I know. I heard when he said that. You know what I mean? They, he was there. He, Dick Gregory was in the mix too. Lamont <laughs> Michael Spanks was a blown up cruiserweight. I knew you gonna. I knew somebody gonna mention that this <laughs> when Tyson beat Spanks. But look, at the time though, Michael Spanks was undefeated. At the time, and Michael Pumped Spanks, up. you know, but he was scared that fight. If you go look at that fight, look how Michael and no, oh, here's the here's the story behind that. Um. Right before the fight, um, they were messing with Mike Tyson or something, and they it, there was a delay, and Mike Tyson kept he was getting pissed. So when when he was shadow boxing, he started hitting the plaster, like he was hitting the wall and putting holes through the plaster. And Michael Spanks heard it. He heard it, and then his manager at the time um, lied to him and said they're doing construction. He didn't want to tell him that Mike was in there putting holes through the wall and whatever. <laughs> and um, so could you, and then 
he when Mike was coming to the ring, he was playing this like weird loud music. It was just like intimidating. Michael Michael Spinks was intimidated. He was intimidated. You could see it in his face. Like he was, it was like he was being. It was like a death sentence or whatever. That's what it seemed like for him. It he was knew he was about to get dropped. Yeah, he knew he was gonna get dropped. He knocked him out the fastest, right? When like the fastest run he had, he knocked people out for twenty seconds. Well, back. the fastest, the fastest knockout in heavyweight history is credited to Mike Tyson when he when he um, knocked out Marvis Frazier, Joe Frazier's son. That's the fastest in um, heavyweight boxing history. He knocked him out in like, it, I don't know, it was like almost eight like seconds seven. or something. It's something like that, seven, eight seconds. Yeah, he knocked. He ding, almost ding, killed him. Huh? Ding, ding. Yeah. So the fight was like this. Man. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> he said Spanks took the fight for the bag. You talking about uh, Michael took this? Yeah. No, Mike was no. Mike was a killer, man. Mike Tyson was the man. I know. I used to follow him as a kid. Man, he was a man. He was the man. He was the man. But his off his outside of the ring stuff got to him. That's what happened. Back then, Mike Tyson fight didn't last more than thirty seconds. Yeah, people used to be pissed. You know, you buy them pay per views, and then next thing you know, the fight's over. You, yeah, you only he eat one chip at that at that fight, Kev. huh? I said you only gonna eat one chip at that at that uh at that fight party. <laughs> Man, I remember my mother used to um she used to order well my parents used to order the fights and my friends from school used to come over. We used to all like you know we used to turn into a party and the next thing you know, the fight's over. The fight's over. Right. It's best yeah, to watch man. the little guys fight. Yeah, at least you get to watch the whole pay per view. Hey, you you know he used to come in with the black shorts, no socks, with the towel on. You know where he got that from? He got nah, that from Jack you? Dempsey. That's how Jack, that Jack Jack Dempsey used to come in the ring. Yeah, no socks, black shorts with the towel on. He got yeah Jack Dempsey. Just raw well, was ready to come out there. And just man, it's like them football players that go out there with no spat. And, and no uh no gloves on <laughs> and no and no socks and <laughs> just cleats like oh, yeah, man, man, he he's just all business right? vintage yeah. Mike Tyson man at that time nobody could beat him he beat himself outside of the ring yeah that going to jail pretty much because if he would never went to jail it I think he would did something it would have been something else imagine if Mike would never went to jail what do you think it would have been? Oh man, I mean, his fighting style though, he would have it would have eventually been exposed, and it was exposed with Razor Ruddick. Uh, no, 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 not Razor Ruddick. Um, Buster Douglas. You well, Buster, Buster used Douglas. well ba basically what happened with Buster, he used his um he used his length. He he had him with that jab and he wasn't afraid of him. But check this out. If you if you go back and watch the fight on YouTube, right? Mike Tyson knocked him out. He it was a it was a slow count. You know how um the ref tell the, the fighter to go to the neutral corner? Well the count was already right. the, the, the the um the count, the official count was already going on. He called the slow count that he actually that he actually got up in 12 seconds. If you count it. When, as soon as he get knocked down, start counting. Mike right, won the rest be Billy. Mike yeah. officially won that fight, but they didn't give it to him. That's why. That's why fighters, when they knock you down, they go right to their corner now, just because of that. But then after that he got the up, way. the rest was history. He knocked Mike out. That was it. Right. They talk, I remember that being talked about. That's that's why you know we see fighters now knock people out. They they go right to their corner because the refs so the ref will start counting. Because like if you knock them out and you start hovering around them. The ref ain't gonna start counting. He gonna put you in your corner, then he gonna come back and start counting. So if you just knock him out and go to your corner, the ref will start counting. Yeah, that's how. That's how he kind of yeah. 
ref, my mic was still, we're going to knock you out. Ref like, get to your corner. Then he turned around and started counting like two, three seconds late. Mike, man. Now, That's Floyd, what you be doing. He knock you out and turn around real quick. Now, Floyd issue was um, when he was in lower weights, he used to knock people out. But what happened was he used to break his hand a lot. He had brittle hands. So that's why he had to fight. The, he had to change his style up when he moved up in weight because his hands were, his hands couldn't take it. Um, So he used to win on points a lot. So that was Floyd's um thing. Yeah, Floyd, I wouldn't call him like a power puncher. He all the way boxer. He wasn't really a slugger like that. No, nah, he was he couldn't. His hands couldn't take it. I think Haney can turn into a slugger though. Real thing though. Like, oh, he, Haney he could already punch. Throwing, he could box. He could punch, but um I want to see him either him or uh Shakur or him and Javante go at it. I don't know. I, I think maybe it should go Shakur first. Let Javante keep his zero for a little while. Be Shakur. Let him get over it. Let him go back out there and fight. And then let the Rumble be him and Tank. And then, you know, that's going to be a good fight. I still think he's going to get Tank, though. Just on the fact that, you know, he really, he really, hey, what convinced me about at first when he, that Lachenko fight, I wasn't convinced all the way on Haney. But when he fought in Vegas, his last fight, I, I'm, I was convinced on Haney. Like I seen how he, how he fights, and like it's always up to the other fighter to like either figure him out and get back in the fight, or just lose the fight. You know, Ben Haney wasn't showing finishing, like, and like that last fight when he was in Vegas, oh, too much control. It was just, it was like a work of art, yo. I was like, okay, now he 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 clicked, like something clicked. He had he hit that click, so. I don't know, man. He, I think he a different fighter, man. Like, is that last fight in Vegas? Haney. Yeah, Haney. I think something clicked because when he was fighting, I was like, okay, it's a seven round. This this is normally when the other fighter kind of figure out figure out something and kind of you know start fighting back, kind of making a fight. And it didn't happen. And what happened? Haney started taking over more. And just started to play with him. Like I'm like, oh, he playing with this guy now. I'm like, oh, we. I'm like, oh, he he clicked. Something clicked. Like you gotta know. Like I mean, I can know. I noticed that. Like I just noticed something clicked. Like right there. Cause I'm I'm noticing how he how he was winning, and I'm just noticing. I'm watching a few of his fights. Then I'm just looking at him. Oh, yeah, something clicked. That last fight, something clicked. Some literally everybody seen a lot of people seen. I know I definitely seen. I said, man, he beat dude like and he was. He went up in weight. You know what I'm talking about? So he got power that he could put on, and then he was just pretty much fighting almost the same. And I was wondering if he was going to be conditioned with the weight. And he was, and hey, he just got stronger. So I don't. I don't, I don't see. I, Hank, I mean Haney and Tank. I was say put their names together. Tank, I like Tank a lot, man. I'll do. I come. I, I really I, well, Sir Ken fight. said. Sir Ken said Tank and Devin would never fight. Why not? Well, why why can't they fight? Because Devin See, not going to uh, move up. Yeah, they don't want to fight. Tank, well, so tank not going to come up. Tank not going to come up. <clears throat> yeah, so that's don't a come up. fight. What's the name? And then finally fought. Um, what's the dude from Texas that got in a car accident? Um, he fought. What's his name? But I but the guy that, talking about. yeah, the guy he fought. If you if um, he's actually how does this work? He's actually a right-handed fighter, but he jabs with his right hand. That's why he's so effective. His his jab feels like a punch, like a like a knockout. He can knock you out with his jab because that's his power hand actually, and the reason why he did that. It's because his real, his true power hand is is uh, he he broke it a few times, so he had to change up. That's why he did. No, how does that work? No, his right hand. About Mayweather. No, um, damn, what is his name? Oh, the guy that got into a crash. The, the brother, dark skin brother. No, he not just the dude that got into the crash. The one he just fought. The guy from Nebraska. He he's a right-handed fighter, but he fights southpaw. Because the reason why he do that is because he broke his hand a lot. Like I, I fight southpaw, 
but I'm not a southpaw. I'm actually a right-handed fighter, but um, who else do that? Um, Shakur does it. Sh- Shakur does it as well. He's actually, he, Shakur is right-handed, but he fights southpaw. So his jab is very effective. And the reason why he does that, and he developed his right hand, so he's essentially he's ambidextrous now. Um, but yeah, he's a he's a southpaw, but he's really right-handed. And sometimes people have problems with their power hand breaking in a lot. So they they'll switch up the southpaw. But that's what that's um Shakur does that. Gotta roll he's, your wrist, actually, he's been doing that since he turned professional. He's always been southpaw. So at some point in his career, he might have had a problem with his power hand. I just don't see him beating Haney now. I mean, I he he kind of like Shakur. Like I, I like I like this. I mean, I like him, but like he like a flashy kind of fighter. Like he uh not I wouldn't say sneaky, but like he kind of he kind of come out of boxing and then he'll flash back into it and get you like and like. I see that style, like how, like how Tank, Tank, he want to get inside, take a punch, you know, hit you with a hook, hit you with a jab, you know, hit you in the body or something. I get Tank, Tank, he want to take punishment and give you punishment. I get, it. but like I don't see the way they fight beating Haney, bro. I just don't see it because Haney is starting. He's really becoming like he's getting the professional style of fight that you want to see boxers have that can last, and then like. Now it's just him being able to execute what he want to do in the ring. So it's like, I like those kind of fighters who actually, like, step by step, they fight style or they stay fight plan, then go by it. Like, Tank, he's, he's, he's waiting. He's being patient enough to, you know, for you to fold. That's his, that's his game, you know, to go in there. He's going he gonna to take a punch and give you a good fight. Shakur, same thing. Shakur gone. He gonna try to mess with your head, take you out of your fight, you know, uh, catch you slipping here and there, you know, sneak attack you here and there, kind of flash fight you here and there. Like, I don't see that kind of style fighting, beating Haney when Haney actually gonna say, okay, I'm gonna hit him 32 times like this. I'm gonna give him five in the body. I'm gonna give him five and go out there and do it. And this, I'm gonna hit him a hundred times this fight, and I'm gonna give it to him a hundred, and just go and do it. like he got that kind of fighting style. I don't, I don't see their fighting styles just being able to be this on that. I, mean, I, I might be wrong, you know what I'm saying? Most likely, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm not really right. Who knows? Who yeah, knows they have a saying? problem I'm with boxing. Saying. Boxing definitely have a problem. Like boxing, like, man, that's really styles, man. You got to see the style. Like Muhammad Ali, man. Muhammad used to be. You know, elusive with power. You know what I'm saying, Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying, destructive with with destructive with destructive power. Ali, you know, Lennox Lewis, strategist. Ali was one. It was like once in a lifetime type of fighter. It has never been really truly a heavyweight like him ever since. This guy had middleweight speed, but he was a heavyweight. And if you notice, he didn't throw many body shots. All laser head shots. It, it, man, he was nothing like that guy. Man. It was nothing like him. And we were robbed of his prime because what happened was that whole thing with the draft came up. But it, it actually set a precedent, though. Um, he won that, and it's, it, it set a precedent with the Supreme Court. But we were robbed of some of his good years because he had to sit out. But, yeah, yeah it's nothing like that guy, man. I watched some of that video of him in the Olympics. And um, in Rome, man, you saw the flashes of greatness. Then it was nothing like him, man. Barry, he was like, it was just nothing like him. There's nothing like him. Still not right. Dude's six five, six four, two hundred, six three, or something like pound. that. Moving like that, man. Punching. He's this a- man had middleweight speed. Middleweight speed. I never forget. Did you see the Foreman fight? Nobody gave him a chance, but he had said before the foreman fight how he was going to beat him. He saw all you got to do is work the jab and keep your distance. He's going to get tired, and then you get the whooping on him, and he did just that. Right. That's what I'm saying. Fighters like that, fighters who just say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go and execute it, 
they got they just different kind of fighters. And that's how I see Haney. I see Haney like that. I see Haney like he just he just got a plan and he gonna do it and he do it. And I think before he was like, okay, he was giving people rounds. Now he's not giving people nothing. Like, this is how I see it, man. Like Shakur, I, I like Shakur's talent. I think his game planning, the way how he uses skill, I don't know, maybe it's more his character. But I think if he really try to fight and become a boxer, like I think he can really box, but I don't see him being Haney. I, I just don't see it happen. Yeah, we're going to wait and see for the next fight um, come up. But Thomas, I think I'm going to call it here. I'll be back tomorrow. What is it, Saturday? Maybe tomorrow, Sunday, I think. I'm gonna yeah, be back. man, for sure, for sure. But yeah, man. To me, come through the day with you. You got to come over Um, at the other spot. We talking about that trial. You might like it. Yeah, I'm, I think it's crazy I, though. I'm not, I don't know. I'll be getting, I'm always, I, I get, I got to check my notifications, man. I'm going to go, I'm going to start pulling up. All right. You know what I mean? So yeah, I need to talk about, uh, oh boy, still right. Yeah, he in trial now. Don't look good, man. Yeah, man, there's a whole lot going on, man. You know, I mean, like I said, most know, you know what I'm saying? You can't be out here playing around with that, you know, especially with the, uh, what uh what what he be doing, man? Like I oh, said, it, it, it was a whole thing. Like to do that, you supposed to like man find your family history, claim your name, and then like if you really want to do all that with the women's like that, you supposed to make sure the children gonna be heirs to the land and all this other stuff, not just abandon the states. Like you just keep you just keep making babies and like you not you not at least even securing the bond on them. Like I get all the stuff he's trying to do, man, but it's just like. That stuff, man, put a bad look on what's really real out here, man. And it's like, it's just bits and pieces of familiar, like, teachings. And, it, and I'll, I'll start pulling up over there, though, man. All but, right. All right. You know? All right. Well, shoot, man. I'll catch you over there. But um, yeah, sure. yeah, I'll catch you later. Good talking to you. And um, you guys, y'all be safe. I will catch you guys next time. Let me see what is this, but Bishop gone, man. Wish the wish the best for him. He should uh bounce back, go to another school. And that's it, man. Now waiting for the uh spring game. I mean the spring practice now. That's gonna be up. Can't wait for that. But guys, I'll catch you on the next one.